Miller Stadium, the Wolves' Den, home of the Cane Wolves. Tonight we have a District 9 Region 2 matchup between the Red Bank Valley Bulldogs and your hometown Cane Wolves. But first, we will start the evening off with senior recognition um, with the marching band followed by cheerleading squad, cross country team, girls golf, and boys golf. First up for the marching band on senior recognition, Dawson Glogau. Dawson is escorted by his parents, Rich and Heather Glogal of Russell City. His school activities include student council for four years, president for one year, marching band for six years, section leader for two years, students for life, four years, president of students for life for three years, a member of the district band, district orchestra, district choir, prom committee, class of 2023 vice president, and is this year's homecoming king. Dawson's school activities include 2021 baby diaper drive organizer, volunteer with Vacation Bible School, volunteer for Care for Kane, bright alternates, volunteer with Walk for Life, and tech helper at New Beginnings Church. Dawson's future plans are to attend Penn State University to major in political science. Ladies and gentlemen, Dawson Glogau. Wyatt Jensen. Wyatt is escorted by his parents, Brett and Becky Jensen of Kane. His school activities include soccer for six years, track for four years, drumline for four years, marching band for six years, trap shooting team for three years, orchestra for seven years, concert band for six years, student council member for three years, science olympiad team for two years, and students for life for three years. Wyatt's community activities include intern for Warren County Summer Music School, Elks Bowling, and is a member of the St. Callistus Catholic Church. Wyatt's future plans are to attend Junietta College. Ladies and gentlemen, Wyatt Jensen. Dale Morris. Dale is escorted by his parents, Andrew and Katrina Morris of Kane. His school activities include marching band for five years, drumline for five years, trap shooting team member for four years, prom committee for one year, students for life member, and National Technical Honor Society. Dale's community activities include Life Scout in Boy Scout Troop 410, Vacation Bible School volunteer, member of New Beginnings Assembly of God Church, is employed at Peterson Refrigeration and Air Conditioning. Dale's future plans are to attend an undecided college to major in forestry. Ladies and gentlemen, Dale Morris. Abigail Port. Abigail is escorted by her parents, Tom and Heather Port of James City. Abigail's school activities include marching band for three years, concert band for eight years, IU9 band for two years, SAD member for one year, Special Olympics volunteer for two years. Community activities include Care for Kane volunteer for three years. Abby's future plans are to attend college to pursue a career <laughs> as a dental hygienist. Ladies and gentlemen, Abigail Port. <laughs> and our fin final senior member of the marching band, Jacob Troutman. 
Jacob is escorted by his parents, James and Sally Troutman of Mount Jewett. His school activities include track and field for four years, marching band for six years, drumline member for four years, concert band for eight years, district band for two years, IU-9 band for one year, student council for one year, prom committee for one year, brass section leader for two years, and was in Shrek the Musical. Jacob's community activities include volunteering at Mount Jewett Swedish Festival, Mount Jewett Community Christmas Volunteer, Care for Cane Volunteer, Wreaths Across America Volunteer, and is a member of Boy Scout Troop 410. Jacob's future plans are to achieve the rank of Eagle Scout and attend college to major in wildlife and fisheries science. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Troutman. <laughs> <laughs> Now will be our senior members of this year's cheerleading squad. First up, Kylie Asel. Kylie is escorted by her parents, Rich Asel and Cassie Snyder of Ludlow. Her school activities include orchestra for four years, SAD for four years, prom committee for two years, cheerleading for two years, softball for one year, yearbook staff member for one year, and athletic association member for two years. Kylie's community activities include Girl Scouts, babysitting, volunteer with Ludlow Volunteer Fire Department, and is employed at the Olmsted Manor. Kylie's future plans are to attend college and major in nursing. Ladies and gentlemen, Kylie Asel. Jen Bundy. Jen is escorted by her parents, Jackie Lindquist of Kane and Doug Wilson of Kane. Her school activities include cheerleading for three years, SAD member for two years, prom committee member for one year. Jen's community activities include volunteering at UPMC Kane Foundation fundraisers. Jen's future plans are to attend school to pursue a career as a veterinarian assistant. Ladies and gentlemen, Jen Bundy. Next up for the cheerleading squad, Selena Foster. Selena is also a member of the marching band as well. So senior recognition for cheerleading squad and also marching band for Selena. Selena is the daughter of Jennifer Foster of Ridgeway and Angelo Hall of Bradford. She is escorted tonight by her father, Angelo Hall and grandparents, Rick and Margaret Money. Her school activities include SAD for one year, prom committee member for two years, marching band for one year, and cheerleading for 10 years. Selena's community activities include babysitting for local families, volunteering with Ludlow Volunteer Fire Department. Her future plans are to attend college to pursue a career as a game warden. Ladies and gentlemen, Selena Foster. Our last member of this year, senior member of this year's cheerleading squad, Kylie Hausler. Kylie is also a member of the golf team. Kylie's escorted by her parents, Bob and Jesse Hausler of Kane. Her school activities include SAD for four years, band and orchestra member for four years, golf for four years, and cheerleading for four years. Her community activities include Care for Cane Volunteer for four years, Girl Scout member, babysitting for local families, and is employed at Texas Hot. 
<coughs> Kylie's future plans are to pursue a career as an air traffic controller. Ladies and gentlemen, Kylie Hausler. And those are our senior members of this year's cheerleading squad. Next up, senior members of the cross country team. Cecilia Anderson, CC Anderson. CC is escorted by her parents, Dale and Julia Anderson of Kane. Her school activities include National Honor Society for two years, SAD member for four years, student council member for four years, prom committee member for two years, cross country team for two years, and track for four years. CC's community activities include volunteer at Vacation Bible School, Care for Kane volunteer, religious education assistant, and she is employed as a lifeguard. Her future plans are to attend college for the study of oceanography. Ladies and gentlemen, Cecilia Anderson. Kayliana Rhodes. Tonight, Kayliana is escorted by her parents, Brian and Laura Rhodes of Kane. Her school activities include cross country team member, captain for two years, track team member for three years, basketball for three years, volleyball for one year, a member of the National Honor Society for two years, SAD member for four years, students for life for four years, and yearbook staff member for two years. Kayliana's community activities include Care for Kane volunteer for four years, the Hygiene Project for one year volunteer, Girl Scouts Cadet one year, Diaper Drive volunteer for one year, volunteer with Special Olympics, the Swimming and Track and Field for Special Olympics volunteer, Assembly of God Sunday School teacher. Kayliana's future plans are to attend Mercyhurst University for fashion merchandising in their three plus one program with the Fashion Institute of Technology or American Business School of Paris. Ladies and gentlemen, Kayliana Rhodes. And those are our senior members of the cross country team. Next up, our senior member of the girls golf team. Riley Haight. Riley is escorted this evening by her parents, Todd and Stacy Haight. Riley's school activities include National <coughs> Honor Society for two years, SAD member for one year, golf team for four years, and basketball team for four years. Riley's community activities include member of Tabor Lutheran Church, member of Girl Scout Troop, 90008 and volunteer with Care for Kane. Also a volunteer with Kane Junior Golf Program, volunteer with Hickey Electric for Highway Litter Pickup, and is employed in the kitchen and housekeeping at the Olmstead Manor. Riley's future plans are to attend college to major in pre-veterinary program or wildlife biology. Ladies and gentlemen, our senior member of the golf team, Riley Haight. Now the senior members of this year's boys golf team. Ryan Huber. Ryan is escorted by his parents, Mark and Tanya Huber of Kane. His school activities include golf team member and track and field. Ryan's future plans are to attend Triangle Tech in the electrician program. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Huber. Next up, senior member of the boys golf team, Caden Smith. Caden <coughs> is escorted by his parents, Nathan and Michelle Smith of Kane. His school activities include golf for three years, 
track team for one year, girls basketball team statistician for four years, athletic association for four years, one year as the president, class treasurer for three years, prom committee member for one year, and has been a member of the National Honor Society for two years. Caden's community activities include Vacation Bible School game leader, volunteer with Junior Golf Program, volunteer with Meals on Wheels, and a Care for Cane volunteer. Caden is a member of the St. Callistus Church, helping with church service activities, DJ for the Cakewalk, Bingo Night, Meals Delivery to Homebound Individuals, Christmas Caroling, and Second Harvest Backpack Program. Caden's future plans are to attend St. Bonaventure University to major in business and statistics. Ladies and gentlemen, Caden Smith. Let's put your let's put our hands together one more time for all the senior members of this year's marching band, cheerleading squad, cross country team, the girls golf team and the boys golf team. Senior recognition for the football team will begin at around 6:40. The official station of Wolfpack Nation, 1017 XZY. It's Kane High School Football. Our broadcast is brought to you through the support of great businesses like W.E. Swanson Agency, Texas Hot Lunch, Kane Lumber and Fuel True Value Hardware, Zook Motors, Peppy's Bistro, The Spoonwood Inn, Kane Elks Club, D'Angelo Custom Built Manufacturing, Flickerwood Wine Cellars, Howard Hanna Professionals, Cook's Home Furniture, Field Street Boots, Lobo Fitness, Haberberger Disposal, Atlantic Eastern Electrical, Kane Liquid Fuels and the Sparkle Car Wash, and our Friends of the Wolfpack supporters. Now, let's go live to the field with XZY Sports Announcers Steve Bizak, Zach Holt, and Chris Nicholas. Yeah, and welcome here to uh, Friday Night Lights up at the Kane High School Football Stadium. As uh, you just heard it, uh, the Red Bank Valley Bulldogs coming up here to Kane and uh, taking on a a big time football game here tonight from for our high school perspective. Yeah, absolutely, Steve. And uh, the Bulldogs come in at six and zero, and the Wolves uh, one and five. 
Um, the Bulldogs coming off a state runner-up title last year. They were, uh, I think they lost 14-7 in the state final. They were a player two away from bringing that state title back to New Bethlehem. Uh, where Red Bank's at, and they come in with a passing attack that is almost college-esque uh, with the stats they're putting up, and uh, the, they're, they want to play to outscore you, and the Wolves are kind of uh, still kind of trying to find their identity, um, but they've also had a lot of uh, high spots in their season, um, so they look to build on that and play spoiler here uh, moving forward in this season. Yeah, this would be a spoiler game for them tonight, and last week, Kane, uh, homecoming was last Friday night, and... Uh, uh, Port Allegheny Gators came to town, and Port Allegheny being one of the top Division I teams here, and uh, Kane right with them, right, for the first half. And that's been kind of the, the thing this year so far. We've been playing the first half, get third quarter, and then it kind of just maybe slips away a little bit into that fourth quarter. And, you know, like I said, by no means has this Kane team been out of games. Yeah, I mean, like we talked about in the pregame before we came on the air, Steve, you know, the only game they really weren't in from, you know, the get-go or moving forward in the game was St. Mary's. St. Mary's game. And, like, uh, you think about the punks Tawny game early in the season, two fumbles down in their own end. Punks, he got a quick 12. And then you think about last week, Port Allegheny, the game me and Bruce did, and Kane had them on the ropes. I mean, yeah. they, were got, they got moving, their, uh, you know, the whole nine yards, and uh, then it just kind of fell apart for them there after a big kick return. So, you know, the Wolves just want to play spoiler. And for the Kane Wolves, I mean, we're relying really this year. I mean, Ricky Zampona having a great year. He is the Iron Man. I mean, carrying the ball, been, I forget, I over, I forget what it what it is. You, you go ahead and give, yeah. give, give the stats. R Ricky pretty much rushing for almost 700 yards this year on about 110 carries, about 12 touchdowns, according to there. And uh, he's been the workhorse, and they've been still trying to find, you know, Landon Dar still out there in the edge, but – Teams have known, you know, receiving-wise, Dar, we can double and throw safety over the top, take them underneath routes over. You know, they're going to be very, very one-dimensional. West has gave a nice little extra spark yep. here in the last He's few come weeks. He's in, yeah. Plants defensively, and I think they use him sparingly on offense because he's defense. The Iron Man on the defense, right. Yeah, yeah so and, and, and uh, Red Bank Valley can score quickly. That, that's the big thing we're talking to. Uh, we, they played uh, Ridgeway here a couple weeks ago, and it was a pretty tight first half. I mean, I think actually Ridgeway even was in the lead for a while, and then it was just like bang, 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 like three, three uh, possessions, three touchdowns, two fifty, over 50, and one was a 75-yarder. So Yeah, and when you play a team like Red Bank Valley, obviously – their quarterback Cam Wagner, 90 for a buck, 23 this year, over 1,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, three interceptions. That's better than some NFL stats and yeah. some colleges out there. Um, so that's something you got to do if you're the Wolves offensively. Slow it down. In a way, you want to move the ball methodically, run it. Don't give them more possessions, and keep everything in front of you. Make them go on 12 plays drives. Make them uncomfortable. And the thing with them is now Red Bank, they got Byers back at their running back. He's only been like three games here. He has 500 yards rushing. So it's a double-headed monster. That's why they're state runners up. But this is where you get a chance to take the crown and say, hey, we are here to play on our home field. Um, but they're going to have to slow the game down. The yep. Wolves, they can't turn the ball over. they got to keep the fields long for Red Bank. they got to be able to put pressure. And like I said, defensively, they got to funnel everything to the middle you got to make solo tackles because Red Bank's offense is let's get our athletes in space because my athletes are better than your athletes. Yeah. Basically, mano and mano, and uh, you got to make a play. And like you said, too, you know, the buyer's kid back, so there's the, you know, he's into the backfield, then you got four wide receivers, and then the quarterback, Wagner. So, so like you said, that's a six headed monster. Can't, you know, pretty much you just can't take one or two elements out of the game. They, they can turn on you at any time. Absolutely. And one of the things about Kane, and, you know, I said no excuses. We talked about this all year, too. But just the numbers itself, I mean, starting some, you know, young kids this year, 10th graders, and said Zampona and Aaron Smith and, uh, they, you know, the leaders on the and, and Addison Plants, uh, the seniors. But it's just kind of, you know, once – and not saying it bad, but just it – you know, that's what I think happens. It's just not – there's not enough horses, you yeah, know. Sometimes that is the issue, and you, you've seen the growth, though, oh, by yeah. these young players this year that, you know, they're prepared, and they, the kids know it. I mean, they're competitive. They want to do well. And it's just those, if you could just break it down into, you know, little segments, it's these one or two plays here or there, which we all know in football any team can make. 
And, uh, you know, like last week, Ridgeway went and bumped off Keystone, who yeah. was riding high. And they Keystone made a few mistakes, and that's what happens in high school football and the leadership. But I think keeping these the Wolves together, it's one and five. It's really hard to keep young kids engaged because yeah, they know there's really – there is an end coming, and it's maybe sooner than later. Well, so focus I've, is I've big talked thing. to Coach Sophies a couple different times, and that it's one thing he did say. This this team is united, and, and that's the coaching staff too. I mean, yep. you can just tell we got a – I mean, it's a great coaching staff up here. That's why I have a lot of confidence in what looking forward in, in you know, even tonight. I mean, like I said, you keep it slow. And I guarantee you they got a great game plan for tonight. It's just making the plays. Uh, but the thing about it is, like I said, uh, we have a 10th grader quarterback. I mean, we got three kids that are 10th graders on the front line. I mean, it's just so. It's just finding that mesh and what works. And like you said, the coaching staff, they're going to be prepared. Coach Sophies and Coach Smith and Coach Berlin, they're going to have them guys ready. Yeah. And it's going to be execution. And they'll never tell you that their kids didn't execute. It is just one of those things where, you know, you see it even in the NFL and college level. You just get some bad luck, and it's just hard to kind of keep the momentum. But last week the Wolves were so close, and, you know, I hope these kids understand, like, hey, you're one or two plays away yeah. from beating a 4-1, and 5-1 and one team. Well, like you said, last week it was, what, 12 nothing at halftime or 14 not 12 nothing at halftime. We came out and scored and made right 12 six, and then the kickoff, there was a slip. Yeah, it kind of went back and forth. And then, and then it just, you know, then that kind of was that momentum. Uh, thing. Next thing you know, it was instead of 12 6, it was 20 to 6, and just kind of snowballed from there. And before we get, go any further, too, I just want to give a shout out. My daughter likes why last yep. week I wasn't here. My daughter was married down at the Dam Inn, and I got I told this Donnie Lee winner that got to give him a shout out for he took great care. He's the owner of the Dam Inn, and then Joe Gentile always comes, you know, he's the fireworks guy up here. Well, son of a gun, if Joe Gentile didn't come down and shoot fireworks off. So I had awesome. to, yeah. I saw pictures. Did you see pictures? Yep. Yeah. So I got to give a shout out to, to that. That was a great thing, and we really appreciated that a lot. So yep. we're I think gonna we're going to. All right, guys, I need yep. to butt in now. So uh, we do need to do senior rec for the football players. So, Zach, if you want to put that mic on in. For Good evening once again. We now we will have senior recognition for this year's senior members of the Cane Wolves football team. Lucas Burrs, Lucas is escorted by his parents, Chris and Sarah Barber of Kane, and Neil and Holly Burrs of Silver Creek, New York. Lucas's school activities include football for four years, baseball for four years, and drumline team member for three years. Lu Lucas's community activities include volunteer with Care for Kane and Mayfield volunteer. Mayfield, Kentucky Tornado Relief Effort volunteer. Lucas's future plans are to attend Elite Lineman Training Institute in Tunal Hill, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucas Burrs. Landon Dar. Landon is escorted by his parents, Corey and Shannon Dar of Kane. His school activities include football for three years, basketball for four years, baseball for four years, orchestra for four years, prom committee member for two years, envirathon team member for one year, and SAD member for one year. Landon's community activities include volunteer with Care for Kane, Kane Area Little League volunteer, he is a member of the Tabor Lutheran Church, and volunteer with the Future Wolves Youth Football Camp. Landon's future plans are to attend college to major in health and physical education. Ladies and gentlemen, Landon Dar. James Dean. James is escorted by his parents, James and Debbie Dean of Mount Jewett. His school activities include football for four years and track for one year. James's community activities include member of the Boy Scout Troop 410 for 10 years, volunteering with Boy Scout projects, 
flag displays on holidays, flags for veterans at cemeteries, Swedish festival volunteer, and James is employed at Table 105. His future plans are to attend trade school for aquatic maintenance. Ladies and gentlemen, James Dean. Luke Eli. Luke is escorted by his parents, Scott and Kelly Eli of Kane. His school activities include wrestling for three years, baseball for two years, and football for one year. His community activities include volunteer for Care for Kane, St. Callistus Church activities volunteer, and Jarrett Costanzo tournament volunteer. Luke's future plans are to attend Penn Tech for heavy equipment operation. Ladies and gentlemen, Luke Eli. Daniel Paul. Daniel is escorted by his parents, Scott and Chrissy Paul of Kane. His school activities include basketball for four years, football for one year, track for two years, and soccer for two years. Daniel's future plans are to seek employment at Domtar and someday get married and start a family. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Paul. Addison Plants. Addison is escorted by his parents, David and Casey Plants. His school activities include football for 11 years, wrestling for 11 years, and track and field for one year. Community activities include volunteer with Care for Kane, youth football camp volunteer, and Special Olympics volunteer. Addison's future plans are to pursue a military career in naval architecture or the Coast Guard. As a boats, boatswain's mate, ladies and gentlemen, Addison Plants. Aaron Smith. Aaron is escorted by his parents, Aaron Smith and Christy Yonde of Kane. His school activities include football for three years. Aaron's community activities include employment at Highlander Energy. Aaron's future plans are to attend Lincoln Electric for welding. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Smith. Scott Samansky. Scott is escorted by his parents, Mike and Deb Samansky of Kane. His school activities include orchestra member for four years, football for four years, basketball for one year, track for three years, and a prom committee member. His community activities include volunteering with Future Wolves football camp and Mayfield, Kentucky tornado relief effort. He is also a lifeguard at Open Swims. Scott's future plans are to attend college to major in secondary education. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Samansky. Cole Walker. Cole is escorted by his parents, Doug and Amy Walker of Kane. His school activities include soccer for four years, football for two years, and marching band for four years. His community activities include Cole is a Eagle Scout and junior assistant leader. Cole's future plans are to attend trade school for electrician or pursue a career in law enforcement. Ladies and gentlemen, Cole Walker. And our final senior recognized this evening Ricky Zampona. 
Ricky is escorted by his parents, Rick Zampona and Sharon Zampona of Kane. His school activities include football for four years, track for four years, basketball for two years, orchestra, is a prom committee member, and indoor track for one year. Ricky's community activities include volunteer with Future Wolves football camp, chains worker for the middle school and JV football games, Little League Baseball umpire, Mayfield Kentucky Tornado Relief Effort volunteer, Kinzu Reservoir Fish Habitat Projects volunteer, and is employed as a delivery driver for Roma Gardens. Ricky's future plans are to attend a four-year university to major in exercise science and minor in business while hoping to participate in collegiate track or football. Ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Zampona. And with that, Put your guys. hands together one more time for the 10 senior members of this year's Cane Wolves football team. With that, guys, let's go ahead and unplug the mic, and Joe should be listening back at the station, so we're going to send it back to him for a few words from our sponsors and then get back to the game. Get back to the game. 1017 XCY's pregame show is sponsored by Atlantic Eastern Electrical, providing electrical contract services for business and industry. They're located in Kane and can be reached at 837-1222. Atlantic Eastern Electrical. You're listening to Kane Wolves High School Football on 1017 XCY. Supported by great local businesses like these. W.E. Swanson Agency, offering plans for auto, homeowners, and business and commercial at 23 Fraley Street. On the web at weswanseneagency.com. Texas Hot Lunch and Four Sons Family Restaurant. Field Street in Kane, home of the Kane Texas Hot. And serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. 814-837-8122. Kane Lumber and Fuel, True Value Hardware. Located at 250 Hemlock Avenue. Serving the Kane area for over 85 years with remodeling and building supplies, tools, and paints. Cook's Home Furniture, located at 27 Fraley Street. Serving you furniture styles and designs for all the rooms in your house. Cook'sHomeFurniture.com. Zook Motors, Route 6, just west of Kane, with new and pre-owned cars and trucks and service and parts department. Their inventory listings are online at zookmotors.net. Kane Elks Club, serving dinners on Fridays for members and their guests starting at 4 p.m. daily. Open bowling and league play available throughout the year. For information, call the Elks at 814-837-8812. Howard Hanna Professionals, representing buyers and sellers of homes, commercial properties, and acreage in the Kane area and surrounding region. Online at howardhannaprofessionals.com. Field Street Boots, offering Carhartt and Timberline clothing along with hunting and fishing supplies. You can find them on Facebook or 18 Field Street in Kane. D'Angelo Custom Built Manufacturing, proud to stand behind Kane High Athletics and Academics. On the web at custombuiltmfg.com. Pepe's Bistro, 127 Fraley Street in Kane, with a food and drink menu including salads, subs, and wings, as well as a select Collection of beer. Their phone number is 814-837-8712. The Spoonwood Inn. They offer lodging and accommodations on Route 6 on the edge of Kane, just across from the Knox and Kane Bike and Walking Trail. They can be reached at 814-561-1365. Flickerwood Wine Cellars. With wines made in-house as well as a gift shop and cocktail lounge offering a menu of entrees. They're on Flickerwood Road in Kane. Haberberger Disposal, providing careful removal of household or business trash for customers around the region. They can be reached at 814-558-4304 or online at haberbergerdisposal.com. In celebration of the opening of the first Passive House commercial retrofit building in the U.S. at 63 Fraley Street, music artist Van Wagner has written and recorded this song to pay tribute to the building now known as Six and K. Up on Route 6, there's a buzz going round. Something new is taking shape in the heart of a town. Along the Allegheny Forest, where the forest still remains. Something big is going on, it's going on in Kane. Six and Kane. Six and Kane. 
invited to the grand opening of Six and Cane. Saturday, October 8th, an on-site open house from 9.30 to 2, including storytelling theater, a walk down memory lane with area citizens, tours of the building, lunch with the tradespeople, and more. The Cane Volunteer Fire Department will have a chicken barbecue, and WXZY will be broadcasting live. All the details are at WXZYradio.com. We thank the West Penn Power Sustainable Energy Fund, a 501c3 nonprofit organization, for their support. The official station of Kane Wolves Sports. WXZY LP Kane. Let's go, Wolves! 1017XZY. Okay, that brings us back to Paul R. Miller Stadium as uh, the Red Bank Valley undefeated Bulldogs coming up here to take on the Kane Wolves. And I'll tell you what, uh, the field looks absolutely, again, gorgeous out here. I wasn't down on it or anything, but, uh, you know, it's held up pretty well this year. Yeah, and they've done a good job keeping a lot. I know a lot of, uh, like, I don't think there's any soccer games on it this year. And they've, you know, they knew their schedule and they knew that there were some issues with the field. So they've done an excellent job of keeping it uh, here because sometimes this time of year everything's a mud pit unless you've got turf. Yeah, and, and like, you know, was it raining today? And the other day it was raining. So I thought, yeah, cold it might damp. be. Yeah, cold, damp. I thought, uh, you know, you might see some mud out there. But I'll tell you what, it surely looks beautiful from up here in this heated booth, you know. <laughs> yeah, from this heated booth here. And uh, give a shout-out to our buddy Bruce back home. Yep. Getting well, has some ailments, couldn't make it tonight. Feel better, buddy. Yeah, there uh, you go, Bruce. And our also uh, Chris Nichols, he just laughed when I said, we're in this heated booth, and Chris outside again. Out and here, Chris, and yep. Jim McVille doesn't have a mic, but he's down there helping out with the uh, video as well. So, now, Yep, you now, guys do a yep. great job, and I hear that all over the – I do. I mean, you just hear that from a lot of kudos that goes out here. Yeah, and I think tonight, too, Chris will be able to chime in here and – Correct me if I'm wrong. I think we're going to carry some of the uh, national anthem because I believe the VFW is going to be doing something special tonight. There is Chris. also a VFW uh, veterans tribute here. Yep, there's all kinds of stuff going on tonight. So, so when we get to that, we'll make sure to try to bring that to you through our uh, stadium announcer, Mr. Weimer. Yep. yep. Hey, and uh, what a what a great night for Senior Rec Night, right? I mean, that's a special night. These kids, uh, not not that it's going to be their last football game up here, because uh, but the reason why we're doing this because of the fact that our last home game is against Bradford, which weather permitting, right? Smart. Yeah. The next two weeks we do go on the road. I think we go to Keystone, Keystone and then to Smithport. Smithport and finish with Bradford, but that's a very smart thing to do tonight. Yep. Do the senior rec. Easier. And also, uh, I guess I'll cover some District 9 action while they're going through some lineups here at Paul RS. Um, District 9 Region 1 matchup. You have Monotot Central Clarion, and we'll make sure to keep you updated throughout the night. Punxsutawney at Carn City, both 3-3, three and three, jockeying for position. For the playoffs, you have uh, Dubois at St. Mary's, both 4-2. and two. St. Mary's upset last week by Brookville. Uh, you have Bradford 0-6 at Brookville. Bradford looking for their first win, and I think Bruce said last last week 23 games, something like that. Uh, also in some Region 2, you got this one right here tonight, Red Bank at Kane. Other Region 2, you got Port Allegheny 5-1 and one at Union AC Valley, at, who's 3-3. Three and three. That's going to be an intriguing matchup. Um, and you have Ridgeway 1-5 and five at Smithport 1-5. And Keystone at Brockway, that's some jockeying for some playoffs. And Otto Eldred, 4-1 and one at Countersport, 4-2. and two. Yes. That'll be a big one. And Sheffield at Cameron County, both 0-5. Yep, so you'll be keeping an eye on all them scores tonight. Yeah, me which and Chris will do the best we can. Yep. Absolutely. Hey, and then I, I just got get a shout-out again to Joe Jontal because I said he did he does all the fireworks here after mm -hmm. all the games. And then he just sent me a snap like you did a few weeks ago outside uh, what, are listening and watching, probably on your phone, uh, to the high school football game around the campfire. So it yep. doesn't get much better than that, right? Not much. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So the bands are getting in place here. A beautiful, crisp night, Steve. I mean, it's really football weather uh, for the most you can. And as I was coming up here earlier, the wind kind of – but now it seems like it died down. Yeah, it, yeah, it was it, definitely windy when I pulled in about uh, 545. How about that, Chris, outside? Is it, 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 it's died down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, died down a little bit. I talked bit, to but a few guys from Red Bank, and they said there's a 15-degree difference between down there and up here. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. All right. So they are very close to the national anthem, right? And we'll give this over to Mr. Warmer. Would everyone please stand for the playing of the national anthem and the school alma mater performed by the Kane Area Marching Band under the direction of Becky Jensen. 
At this time, we would like to recognize all of our servicemen and women in the audience tonight. If you served in any branch of the military, please raise your hand at this moment. We would like to give the, these servicemen and women our applause and thank them for their service. The flag tonight is at half staff to honor members of our military who are no longer with us or died serving their country. As the national anthem is played, the flag will be raised to full staff by members of VFW Post 1132. Yeah, there you have that. I'll tell you what, it don't get much better than this here. And you can go ahead and unplug his mic too. High school football game, right? I mean, you just feel the, you feel it. I mean, on a fall night. And I'll tell you what, uh, there, there was a nice, nice crowd out here again tonight. Even really, really has Red been. Bank. What's that? Good following for Red Bank Valley. Yeah, too. there is. Yeah. Which, when you're six and zero, it makes it easier to travel. Hey, here comes the alma mater coming through here nice. So let's listen to that, the Kane alma mater. Job by the Kane band there, Steve. Yeah, that 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 came through very clear. And uh, I'll tell you something else, too, Zach. This is a pleasure doing this with you. Uh, it's been so, a while. Yeah, it has been a while. It's because I don't think we did any together last year. I just filled in for you when you do your Lake Erie trip with Mars. And yep. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah, definitely enjoyed doing it. And I'm glad to help you guys, and you guys float to the boat and do an excellent job. So. And I tell you what, Red Bank Valley, all white with the red. It's going to be easy to see. Last it, week yeah. was tough. And Bruce port. struggling with that orange. Yeah, with the port. But, yeah, it sticks out really well. And then Kane, all blue with the white helmets. On a, like I said, a, just an absolutely gorgeous night here for high school football. Absolutely. So the coin toss here at midfield, the – Oh, the captains for Red Bank Valley look to be number five, Minich, number one, Orts, number uh, number nine, which they have it a little messy here, so give me yeah, a second. And Byers. And Byers. And then for the Wolves, it'll be Szymanski, Plants, Zampona, and Smith. So I missed there what the refs said who got what. I'm yep. sure. Wolves got the ball. The Wolves got the ball. Wolves so. had the ball. Yep. Here we go. Time for them eight-minute drives, and we got to put points. When you're playing a team like this, Steve, you got to put points on the board. Oh, you do. Yeah, you got to. There's put no points. moral victories moving at 15 yards. You're not playing. You got to keep the ball out of their hands. And if anything, the motivator for the Wolves tonight, like I keep saying, Steve, is play spoiler. You know, 
Make them get out of their game. You have nothing else to lose. Lay it all out there. And like you know, like we talked. I mean, we've been in a lot of games this year. We really have. I mean, from the very first Brockway game, it, it's it's been we've been in them. So they're going to kick for uh, the Bulldogs. Will be uh, number twenty-one, Owen Close. And back deep for the Wolves will be Dane Anderson. And on this side here, I, is that going to be? Might be Sammy West. Yep, Sam West and Dane Anderson standing back right around the 10-yard line. As close, ready to kick off for the Bulldogs. And like you said, they, they were all the way to the state championship game last year. They played in it. and They I don't were know, in it till the very end. Until the very end. I they mean, had a couple a, shots to take the lead, and they just came up short as there's some issues with the play clock. But if they don't get them resolved, the ref will just have to hold it on the – on the field, they'll just have to raise them. So when they raise their hand, the back judge, it'll be five seconds. So, Oh, the one end zone's yep. on and the other end zone's so the, off. So the yeah. back judge will run it. It won't delay the kickoff here. And they'll work on getting that fixed here. Reboot. <laughs> Time to reboot. <laughs> reboot them. <laughs> Technology. Yeah, oh, yeah. So a little delay. So both teams ready to go, and they're kind of going to take it. And i, I got to tell you, on the – the roster sheet here, like the Bulldogs have it like uh, in alphabetical order rather than numerical order. Yeah. So it might be a little bit tough for some other getting some of the play players. Just say number we'll, eight. We'll, yeah, we'll figure it out, though. Yep. So Ooh, now, right. here we go. So close, ready to kick again. Dane Anderson and Sammy West stand back deep. And that's going to be Dane Anderson takes it on the run at the 15, come out to the 20. And he's going to be ahead at the bottom at the 22-yard line, and that's a big collision right out there at the number at the 22-yard line, at number 17. And I see some Adams, big hit. Yep. So a good kick off there. Anderson tried to take the wall right, just really nothing there, blown right up by uh, Adams and Kale there for Red Bank. So here we go. The Wolves start their first drive at their own 21-yard line. And Zampona into the backfield along with, it looks like, Luke Eli out there. And Zampona takes from the Wildcat. And Zampona takes it out to about the 25-yard line, hit there by number one, Aiden Orts, and picked up maybe a gain of about three. Yeah, so the Wolves come out right away, run a little Wildcat, Steve, and run strong off that right side, strong tight end right, and are able to pick up three, and it looks like they're going to keep that package in. So it looks like Plants into the backfield with Luke Eli, and you're right, Zampona out of the Wildcat. So second down and seven they're going to call it, and Zampona takes this one right up the gut, and he's going to be hit right at the line of scrimmage. And that's big number 51, but 52 Carson Rupp on the big tackle there. At no gain, maybe a pickup of a yard. Yeah, and I believe 51 tonight too. He's wearing a separate number. It's going to be that Ross kid as well. So they try a little power right there, and it looks like Zook's going to check back in. So a little wildcat package, but a third and manageable here. Going to be called at third and six for the Wolves. And they got the game clocks ready to go here, so that's a good thing that they can, the play clocks. So Zook out of the shotgun now with uh, receivers Anderson and Lundin split to the left, and he's looking to throw out here to Zampone, and that's going to fall incomplete as number 11 right out there is that Ryan Rupp. So that's going to bring up a fourth down, and th good thing that uh, Zook didn't get some air under that because Rupp was in really good position to kind of, come up and maybe could have had a pick, but it's going to be fourth down as Luke Eli going to do the punting duties for the Wolves. And number one, and that's going to be Aiden Ort standing back at his 40. And along with number 12, Mason Close. And that's going to be blocked. And that's going to be the Bulldogs is that number nine came in there pretty hard. Let's see, number nine. And that was a nice block there by Byers. Yeah, Byers, he just came screaming off the edge and just he was untouched and just blocked it. And now this Red Bank offense only has 19 yards to go. 
So not the start the Wolves were looking for. Steve. Nope, you had to get that one off, and you're right, Zach. So here we go for, looks like uh, Wagner going to be out of shotgun with Byers into the backfield. Has got four wide receivers, Orts and Minnick split to the right, and they're going to flip it. And I'll tell you what, here comes Plants, makes a big tackle, finished off there by Smith. What a tackle by Plants as he comes in and they Shot tried out to, of a gun. Yep, they tried that what that that quick reverse jet sweep, check, yeah. jet sweep with fast. Orts and uh, that's a loss of about six. So Addison Plants picks up right where he left off last week's. So second down and sixteen back at the twenty-five yard line. Wagner again shotgun back to pass, steps up into the pocket, throwing down deep, and that's going to be incomplete. Nice Intended play. out there, looked like number five, Minnick. Number six, that is, Kale. And 11 for the Wolves. And that was Daniel Paul right out there. That was a beautiful play. They had that fade route. He jumped up, and he was able to come underneath and punch it out. So third and long for this Wolves defense. So Wagner again out of the shotgun looking. Has some time. Now he looks like he's going to try to pull down and run, and he's going to be hit as Plants comes up again and makes a big tackle. And Wagner maybe gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and it looks like he might be down on that sideline, off the far sideline. Yeah, Plants, Plants nailed him, and I think the worst thing Wagner could have done there was stop because Plants was able to get a clean hit. So fourth and long. And Wagner was he did was able to get up. And I think Red Banks can try a field goal. They here. are. And this is going to be number 12 coming in. It's going to be a 37-yard field goal attempt. Let me see. 30, yeah, 37-yarder. See, this, this is by the close kid here, right? Yep. Snap looks good. The kick is down, and it is no good. No good. A little wide right. So, boy, the Wolves' defense comes up big as the Red Bank started that drive at the 16-yard line. And, uh, and – uh, Actually lost yardage, so boy, I tell you what, first good defensive place there by the Kane Wolves. Yeah, great job. You know, they went three and out, the block punt, and Wolves defense set the tone early. Plants with that six-yard loss. Now you got them behind the chains, and your defense throwing a couple different things, and uh, now the Wolves take over. Really, everything's back to normal. And Daniel Paul uh, playing beautiful that quarterback. Play. Yeah, beautiful play as they tried to throw that down to the right corner of the end zone. And you can see that Wagner kid does stand tall in the pocket and does throw a pretty nice tight spiral. Yep. So here we go for the Wolves. Their second possession going to be at their own 20-yard line. Zook into the shotgun formation with Zampona into the backfield. And Plants, they hand this to Zampona up the middle. Zampona out to the 25, out to the, about the 27-yard line. Tackle there by Orts, number one, but a nice run by Zampona off that right side of the offensive line for the Wolves. And that right guard, Will Costanzo, had a pretty nice block out there along with uh, Kane Sharba, the center. Yeah, excellent power play right there. That's what they need to do and get big chunks on first down. And they had the, had the leverage that time and a good run by Zampona. Which he's been running tough all year. I mean, he's he's been... The Iron Man at that running back. I'd look and, for a play action here. And car. plants the fullback. I'll tell you what, he's a good lead blocker. And here it is again to Zampona. And he's going to make a first down across the 31 tackle there by number three, Byers. And actually it was number four, but uh, I'm going to say Byers. Yep. So a first down for the Wolves across the 32-yard line is uh, Wolves. So that was a good every first down. Take your time. Take a breath. Let this clock go. The less they have the ball, the better chances you have. And I think that's exactly what you kind of see the Wolves doing. So right now in the middle of that the run game, Sharba and them guys up front with Aaron Smith, and now they're doing an excellent job. So now Anderson goes in motion. They hand this off again to Zampona, the right side. Zampona across the 35, out to about the 36. Pick up a four. Tackled out there by number 12, and that's Mason Klaus on the tackle, along with uh, number four. That's Byers, I do believe, right? Number four? Uh, that's Monoran. Monoran. Okay. That's how you say his name. Where do you see that at on there? Right here. I got it on mine here, Steve O. Okay, Monoran, number four. So the Wolves just going to tick, 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 keep that Red Bank offense off. 
the field. So there you go, four yards. Run four yards again, and you only got two to go. And a handoff to Zampona again. Zampona across the 40, out to about the 42. And I'll tell you, Zampona, extra yards. Tackle there by number 52, Carson Rupp, and also number 13, Cole Bish. Yep, so right there, the Wolves, they get another first down. They've got 30 seconds. I'd be snapping it under 10 on the play clock just to kind of wear them down. And right now, the Wolves' offensive line getting a push, and they're doing an excellent job at it. And this is where you can lull them to sleep. I mean, keep running it. You're getting four or five yards pop, but this is where you got to watch Dar on a play action, you know, lull the defense to sleep. But a good, so far, so good for the Wolves. Yep, they just got Dane Anderson split out here to the right. And again, Zampona with the ball. Tries to cut it outside. He's going to be tackled for no gain, maybe a loss. Brock Morin on the tackle. Yeah, so that time they just try that right power again. And that time Orts came, but I'll tell you what, Orts is playing that safety position and he's screaming down every time. Be something to keep an eye on. They run this eye look like a play action, have Samansky out here in a corner route and Dane Anderson on a five yard end and make Orts pick which way he's gonna go and both are easy throws. It's not there, throw it into the stands. And like I said, they're they're bunched in here right now, the Wolves, like yeah. on, on that. And Red Bank knows they're gonna run, so yeah. they got 11 in the box. Now Anderson in motion here from left to right. And again, Plants with the ball. Quick draw up the middle. Plants across the 50 into Red Bank Valley territory. Close to a first down was Addison Plants. And that's that quick hitter right up the gut. Finally brought down out there by 52 Rupp. Yeah, so beautiful. They've been running that power right, power right. Fake it, counter underneath. Had the pulling right guard there. Smith cleared out the second level in the backer, able to get to the third level on a first down. So an excellent play call and a good run by Plants. He was one block away from breaking it. So that brings up a first down for the Wolves, and it's going to be at the 47-yard line of Red Bank. As six minutes to go here, no score. Again, shotgun formations, look into the shotgun, hands off to Zampona, off that left side there. Zampona across the 45, down at about the 44 yard line. Hard run by Zampona, and it's staying down on the ground and tackled there by number 52 Rupp again for the tackle for the Bulldogs. Yep. And it looks like Zampona hopefully just got the wind knocked out of him because that was a pretty tough hit right there at the, right at the line. Yep, so that'll bring us to an injury timeout, but the Wolves are doing a good job here, running the ball, control the line of scrimmage, exactly what we talked about. You had the little hiccup there with the block punt, but your defense did an excellent job. And why we got this injury timeout, we'll see if there's any scores here across District 9. And where, where'd they start? We started this at the 20-yard line, yeah, you yeah. know, so a nice little. Keeping the ball out of the hands of, you know, Red Bank. And Zampona, I do think I might have just got the wind knocked out. Let's, Let's hope that. Yeah. So we got a score, Otto Eldred eight, Countersport nothing in the first. Moshannon Valley seven, Kerwinsville nothing. So Zampona up on his own power. And everything else still 0-0. Zero, zero. I mean, we're early, but. And Eisenhower up 7-6. Eisenhower going for their 7-0 and oh down in District 10, Warren County. They look really good. They do. That's farm country down there. Yep, the way that they call it the uh, welcome to the pasture of pain. It's and it uh, looks like Sammy West now going to come in for Zampona. Zampona looks like he's holding his shoulder a little bit. So I think let's he's hope struggled that's with okay. that all year. Mm -hmm. And he knows he, he's tough, so if he can go, he will. So, so after the two-yard gain, it's going to be second and eight. West into the backfield, and they hand this off to West, and he's going to be hit right at the line of scrimmage. And that's big number 52. And that is uh, 52, that's Carson Rupp on the tackle. Yeah, so the Wolves just try a quick hitter there and now it was just like, a, so third and 10 for the Wolves and this is almost throwing down here. And you know, they're, they're gonna play one-on-one, -on -one. They number five out there for Red Bank. I don't have his number, uh, it's Minich. He's pretty equal to Dar, so that kind of is a matchup to kind of stay on here. Uh, maybe get Dane Anderson on the seam. So they'll only play one safety back here, and I'd expect a blitz. And the Wolves going four wide receivers. Anderson and Lundin split to the left. Dar, Shemansky here to the right, rolling left. Zook throwing downfield for Lundin, and he has it at the third. Oh, he called him out of bounds, or he dropped, dropped, dropped it. it. 
Man, that was, uh, boy, that would have been a big, huge play as Lundeen had his man beat, and Zook dropped it in there pretty well and just not able to hang on to that. Yeah, beautiful corner out. Like I said, they got got the, that man on man. They got the safety. He's playing deep. They run the deep post route with the corner underneath. It was there. Just got to haul it in next time. So the Wolves will punt, but they do flip the field. Yes, yeah, 4.52 remaining here into the first quarter. No score. As uh, Eli stands back at his 40, the first one was blocked. So you got to get this off kind of quick. High snap, brings it down and almost blocked again. Gets it off. It's going to be taken at the 15, out to the 20, out to the 25 to 30. Tackle there. Blocks in the back everywhere on red back Yep, there. by Dar. And that was number six, Kale, on the punt return. But there's flags out there. A block in the back, right, oh, there's Zach? two or three of them right there. That's about the 26. And Dar does a nice job uh, solo tackle on Kale. And he was moving, too. So the refs will sort this out here. So a good drive, kind of, you know, you get a run and a penalty. Yep. And then he, or the injury, and it just kind of fell apart. But he had to play. It was there. He just, you know. Tried yeah. to watch his feet because he was close to the sideline and it slipped through. So here we go for the Bulldogs. So they'll call holding on that. So they'll decline the first one and now they're going to take the block in the back, which will push them. I believe that's 15 yards block that's in 15, the back. That's 15, yeah. So we'll see where they uh, start this at. It looks like it might have thrown it at the 25, and after that's 15. That takes them back inside close to yep. the 10. Yep. And they're still working on Zampona here in the sidelines, too. You know, I'm going to keep an eye on that and see if. And they're going to start it right back at the 12-yard line. Yep. So the Bulldogs start their second drive with 440 remaining here. Opening quarter, no score. And this is where you don't want anything deep because they'll take the top off of your defense real quick. Yep. Broken. So Wagner starts this uh, drive back at his, yeah, 12 yard line. Yep. Took a little while to figure that one out, Zach, but they finally got it spotted. Got it spotted. So Wagner, the quarterback, with Byers into the backfield with him as four wide receiver Orts, Minnick, Kale, and Close. Two and two, to the left, two to the right. Now Orts in motion. They do a counter out to the 20, 25 run out of bounds there by Shemansky and Byers. Just on that quick trap counter play, and that's going to be a pickup of what, close to about 15? Yeah, so what Red Bank did there, Steve, is remember play one of their first drive. They tried the jet pass. Plants blew it up. That time, Plants jumped it. Instead, they countered around with it with two pulling guards. Had him going one way, came the other way. Keep the defense back to neutral and a gain of 12 and a first down for the Bulldogs. So Wagner again, shotgun with uh, Byers in the backfield. Trip receivers to the right. They hand this off to Byers, and Byers is going to be snuffed right out at the line of scrimmage. Luke Eli, but I thought uh, Kane Sharba was the first guy there, and then Luke Eli finished him off. Yeah, and Reese Pajakis did a good job there. He took on the initial block that freed up. Uh, Sharba and Eli, so. No gain, no second gain. and 10. Ball at the Red Bank Valley 25 yard line. Second and 10, Wagner again, shotgun formation, trip receivers to the right. As Byers into the backfield with Wagner. As the play clock now under 10. Sharba looked like he's gonna penetrate. Now here's some pressure from the Wolves. Smith giving chase. As Wagner able to get out and throws that away. So a nice there, defensive uh, Smith and also Eli giving chase on Wagner. Wagner throws that downfield intended out there for Minnick, number five, but falls incomplete. Yeah, and good job by the Wolf secondary, Steve. They're, they're keeping the zone. You see the kind of like a man on zone. Everything's underneath. Those plays are hard because that's when you get out of your zones and people start running and you're playing backyard football. Kind of loses what, you know, your job is. So you've got to be able to adjust quickly. So third and long here, important for the Wolves to get off the field here. Third and 10 with 346 into the first quarter. Wagner back to pass, some pressure, and he throws it. It's going to be picked off by Shemansky. The 30, 25, 20. And he's hit out of bounds and takes the rough down. Man, 
I would say that was pretty, uh, wow. But a huge play by Szymanski, an out route. And I saw him looking for Orts down the middle, Wagner, but Lundin playing that deep safety, showed deep, went underneath, had to hold it off, and Szymanski jumped, and I think Szymanski's going to get the wind knocked out of him there too. But a good pick, and the Wolves are right now, they are in excellent field position. Man, that was right in front of us. And well, you know what? I mean, I, it looked like he was kind of out of bounds when he got hit right in front of us here and took the, the ref, referee out. And the ref looks good. A little wobbly too, my God. Yeah, it was a lot going on there. So the Wolves have made the plays so far tonight, and this is where it's important. you got to capitalize. So they're going to start it at the 15-yard line of the the Red Bank Valley with 3.37 to go here. First quarter, no score. And Sammy West into the game for the Wolves as Zampona on the sidelines here. As into the backfield with West is Plants. As Zook out of the shotgun. Dane Anderson split way out here to the right. It's a tight formation for the Wolves. And they're going to hand this off to West. West tries to get it outside, and he's going to be right at the line of security. Maybe Ross. number Ross, number 51. 51. The number changed before the game. And he, you said he, he's a big-time tackler for these guys, right? Number 51, Ross. Yeah, so West went there, and they did a good job. They got some beef up front. Red Bank does in them A gaps and B gaps right up the middle, and he tried to get outside. Ross does an excellent job as a DN. You got to keep that outside arm free. He's able to shake that tight end and just able to wrap him up, but second and ten. I think yeah. the Wolves are without Zampona may have to try to put it in the air. Yeah, but it looks like he might be. I'm not. Looks like he's not coming back into the game for a while. And a fake to West, and he got a man, it's Dar, and it's just overthrown into the left-hand corner of the end zone. As that was one-on-one -on -one with Dar against Tate Minnick, and a nice pass by Zook as he rolled to the left, put some air just a tad little just bit far. Just that little bit yep. of pressure, they had that blitz and backer. So what Red Bank's doing, they're running a 4-3 base, everything's man, safety over the top, but if he rolls the backer, where Zook's rolling to is blitzing. He's running with him. Therefore, if they could get a mesh route underneath where that blitzing back's coming from, there's a nice open zone and those hash marks on that side. He's rolling if he can just stop and just get enough time to get it back across the so field. So here we go with uh, West out here split to the right, and it looks like they're looking at him, and they got, oh, and that was intended for Shemansky, and that's going to be incomplete as that was a good defensive play out there by Close. Yeah. And that's going to bring up a fourth down from the 15-yard line for the Wolves with 2.47 here to go first quarter. And it looks like maybe the yeah, they're going to go for it here on a fourth yeah. and ten. Yeah, and the wool, and I think this, it's hard right now because Red Bank's throwing a few disguises out, which is tough for, you know, a junior quarterback. But, uh, you know, without Zampona, it makes it rough. But I, I would like to see something in the middle of the field because the way they're playing one safety, make him pick which side. So here we go, fourth and ten. Dar and Zamp looking to the right, looking for Dar down to the right corner of the end zone. And that is falls incomplete as number 12 out there close. Just able to bat that down at the last second as that was intended for uh, Landon Dar. And it was there. I think if it would have been a little more back, Dar might have had a chance at it. So the Wolves after the interception don't move it. So the Wolves have showed up here, though. But this is what I mean. You've already given Red Bank three opportunities to your, you know. And how to, hard is this for Zampona to be sitting out there in the sidelines, you know, in this big game right here for him? And he started out with a ball of fire on him because he does. He runs very hard for the Wolves. But uh, looks like he might be lost for the rest of the game as Sammy West does, uh, does the duty. So first down for Wagner at the 15-yard line, and they're going to hand this to Byers, and Byers across the 15, out across the 20, about at the 21-yard line tackle there by Eli. And Bajak is also on the tackle, but a gain of about six, going to be second and four. Uh, I'd, I'd be interested to see here, Steve, if Red Bank maybe runs it a few times just because of the way the Wolves have played the pass. Maybe try to loosen that up and get some eyes looking in the backfield to get some of their passing game going. So again, Wagner out of the shotgun. Is he a senior, Wagner, or is he a junior? I think he's a junior, huh? Yeah, I believe he is a junior, Steve. He's Big tall kid. And Wagner gonna, gonna keep, keep this it. one at the 25 to 30. Down the sidelines, out of bounds at the 35. As that was just a nice fake by Wagner as he read the defense. They faked it to Byers and just 
rode it out to the left side, and there was nobody even out there. Yeah, so Red Bank's offense starting to get a little momentum here, but it's through the run, you know, and they know everybody's preparing Red Bank the same. He got stopped the pass, but then you saw Wagner. He's athletic. He can pull it, so now that's <coughs> one more thing to add to the arsenal and so see what adjustments the Wolves make. First and 10 for Red Bank at the Kane Wolves, 30, at their own 37-yard line with 1.55 to go here opening quarter. Wagner rolls left or right, and he throws, has a man at the 50, 45, down inside the 40-yard line, finally taken out of bounds close to the 35. And that is number five, Tate Minnick, and Plants finally brings him out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. And that's those solo tackles we were talking about. The Wolves missed one there at the line. He's able to scoot up the sideline for an extra about 12 yards. So first and 10, they're going to say at the Kane Wolves 39-yard line. Wagner out of the shotgun with Byers into the backfield. Play clock, oh, a lot of time on the play clock. Trip receivers out here to the left. Kale, Close, and Minnick split left. And they just pitch this off to the right side, and that's going to be down inside the 30 is Byers. Going to be close to a first down. Looked like Lundeen out there, number nine for the Wolves, finally knocks him out, out of bounds. But it's going to be a first down for Red Bank Valley Bulldogs. Yeah, so that time showing them a little different. We're going to run speed option. We're going to make you stay at home. That's going to allow our quarterback to get a little better pocket because now everybody's eyes are looking backfield, get ready for Red Bank in the next few plays to pull one out, play action, and look for something over the middle. They go to trip receivers to the left. They hand this off to Byers, and Byers is going to be tackled by Smith. Close to the 30, down to close to about the 25-yard line. Aaron Smith there, first guy to put the hit out along with uh, Plants, and that's going to be a pickup of close to four with a minute 20 to go here. No score, first quarter. As this drive started back at their own 15 and taking it down inside the Kane 25, we're going to call it the Kane Wolves 26. Second and six. Wagner again out of the shotgun with Byers into the backfield with trip receivers split to the left. And Kale split way out to the right. Wagner back to pass. Some pressure. He's throwing downfield, and that's just miscommunicated as that was intended for Kale, but uh, falls incomplete as Kale did the down and out, and he just threw it long. So third and six. So this is big. You, you expect probably after the first field goal attempt to use short. This will be four down territory for Red Bank, unless something they go backwards here. But I believe you're looking for here, if you're Kane, you can still watch that play action. They've shown that run, that read option. See what they do here. Wagner rolling left, looking. Stops and throws, and that's going to be complete down inside the 15-yard line, and that's a nice catch there by number 12, Close, and that is a, a first down as Plants was on the tackle. But, boy, that was just uh, the only receiver he had was him, you know what I mean? A great and, pitch and a great catch and some traffic. Plants laid a hit, but good job there by Red Bank. So Wagner again out of the shotgun, and he's going to hand this off to Byers, and Byers hit by Sharva, but is able to break the tackle, gets down inside close to the 10-yard line. Yep, good job there by Sharva, slow him down. Smith cleaned it up there, so you can see they're calling uh, Red Bank's going to run it, and this might be the end of the quarter, Steve. I, I don't know yep. if Red Bank's going to run it another play. They may, though. And they got it down at the 12-yard line. It's going to be second and seven from the Kane Wolves 12 as – Clock running under five. Maybe they're going to try to get a playoff. Down to two, down to one. And to that is the end of the quarter. So it's end of the first quarter. No score between the Red Bank Valley Bulldogs and the Kane Wolves. We'll take it back to the station and come back for the second quarter. XCY thanks the following sponsors for their support of our broadcast. Cook's Home Furniture, 27 Fraley Street in Kane. Online at cookshomefurniture.com. The Spoonwood Inn, with lodging and accommodations available on Route 6 at the edge of Kane. Flickerwood Wine Cellars, offering a variety of house-made wines and a cocktail lounge serving food whenever the winery is open. Kane Lumber and Fuel True Value Hardware, with lumber, tools, paints, and more at 250 Hemlock Avenue. Howard Hanna Professionals, 30 Fraley Street. 
free. Listings can be found at HowardHannaProfessionals.com. Texas Hot Lunch and Four Sons Family Restaurant. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Zook Motors, Route 6 West of King. New and pre-owned cars and trucks. W.E. Swanson Agency, providing insurance for Kane and all of Pennsylvania. Kane Elks Club, with league and open bowling and dinners for members and their guests starting at four daily. D'Angelo Custom Built Manufacturing, maker of heavy duty records. Field Street Boots, offering Kane sports apparel, gear, and accessories. Haberberger Disposal, waste collection services for residential or commercial. And Pepe's Bistro, 127 Fraley Street, open daily for lunch and dinner. WXEYLP. Kane. Okay, here we are back at Paul R. Miller Stadium in the Barry Morgan Memorial Press Box. And that was a great tribute to Barry Morgan that they named this press box after after Barry, a longtime sports caster from you know Kane, and he's done wonders for the sports for the sports community. community. So it's the second and seven for the Bulldogs at the Kane Wolves eleven. Wagner again, shotgun, looking to pass. Aaron Smith gives chase, but Wagner able to break it down and takes it in for a touchdown on that left sideline. It looked like Smith brought some pressure, and then everybody else just kind of backed up off there, and Wagner went in unscathed. So the Bulldogs score first here, 11.54 to go, second quarter, first play of the second quarter. Yeah, so right there, they just draw back the pass. Here come the pressure. Kane over pursued. Wagner got outside of it. And there, I mean, there was nobody. He could be still running. Yeah, yeah, there was nobody out there for it. Is it playing, you know, the backers were the safeties and the cornerbacks were back into the end zone, and he just took off with it and seen that. So close on for the extra point, and it is good for the Bulldogs. And the first quarter uh, 300 winner was. Uh, Tom Ross. Tom Ross, yeah, Tom Ross Sr. Tom Ross Sr. was uh, the first quarter. So, Tom Ross, congratulations out there for the 300 Club and everybody that uh, helped support the 300 Club. Yep, so the Wolves there after they start, they started out like dynamite. We got the big pick, got the ball inside the red zone. Yeah. Zamboni and, and injury, they couldn't move it, and it just became one dimension. They did have Dar twice, but good play by Minich the, on mm -hmm. the fourth and goal, and – you know, this is what when you give Red Bank lost ball opportunities, bit, yeah, yeah. a little bit of momentum, they're hard to stop. But it is only seven nothing. And like yeah, it's only seven. And like you said, close. I mean, that the Lundin pass was close. That'd have been a big first down. But that was, like I said, off close to the sidelines. He just wasn't able to bring it in. And then you're right down here to the right corner of the end zone after Shemansky's pick. And we started that drive at the 15. And it was. Uh, that was a close play for Shemansky to catch into the end zone, but uh, said it was just batted down by close, right? Uh, minute. Or minute, yeah, minute. And there's a squib kick. Going to be taken at the 30, I think. Hopefully the Wolves fell on it. it and that looked like number two, 22, Levi Wilson out there. Yeah, Levi Wilson is able to fall on that squib kick. Those scare me, the squibs. Yeah, they can get you for sure. And Especially Le on a damp night. And Levi Wilson, 10th grader, falls on it, makes a nice play. The Wolves, hey, in good, good field. Uh, field position here, will start their drive at their own 31-yard line. See what the Wolves come out and do. You've seen they're trying to run. But now with West in, no Zamponi, you almost wonder what the plan is, what type of adjustments Coach Smith's going to make or if they're going to well, just stick this with West kid, I mean, yeah. uh, I'm oh, impressed yeah. with him. I mean, really, he's got some jets. That that game at Ridgeway, they had him and uh, Plants all over 100 yards, and they're going to pitch it to West. He's trying to get it outside, and West just, man, it's going to be tackled. Maybe a pickup of about a yard, number 51, that Ross kid again on the tackle. That's why he's got 60 tackles for the <laughs> year, right? He's, uh, yeah, he's rangy, he's athletic, he's <coughs> long, and you can tell the speed of Red Bank there on that sweep that was there. And uh, West ain't no slowpoke, yeah. and he just couldn't get that edge. Yeah. So a short gain of pick, one. Pick up of a yard. So second and nine, the ball at the 32-yard line of the Wolves. With, and that does stop the clock as he went out of bounds. 11.44 to go here before the half, and the Wolves down by the score of 7 nothing to the undefeated Bulldogs. So out of the shot, now here comes uh, Zook right up under center with Plants. And they're going to hand this off to West right up the middle. And again, Ross 
on the tackle again. It's there, but it closed quick. Yep, a pickup of another yard, so that's going to bring up a third and eight. That just goes to show you really what Zampolin, like I said, well, the horse, running back. Yeah, yeah, running and back. yeah. And like I said, West gives up a lot of size compared to Ricky, and uh, but he's a battler, West. He's going to be out there till the oh, end. Yeah. And I really like this matchup of Dar on uh, number five, Minich over here for Red Bank. I, I think it's something they got to try. So Zook going to go out of shotgun with plants in the backfield, receive four receivers and the ball on the ground as Zook falls on it back at his 20-yard line. And there's some extra crickleum going on here. Wow, and uh, no flags. Yeah, Zook was able to recover his own fumble. And uh, Wolves are gonna have to punt, force the punt back. They're gonna call him down at the 22 yard line. So it's gonna be a fourth and about 20 for the Wolves. So remember the last two punts, one was blocked, one was nearly blocked. Yeah. So. Eli stands back inside about the eight yard line. It looks like Orts and Minix deep as Eli gets a line driver off. Hits it to 45 and goes out of bounds right at the midfield. And yeah, that was a, a good kick by Eli as you're right. Does they kind of put some pressure on you really quick? Yeah, they're just overloading one side and uh, something to keep an eye on. You get better field position. They're gonna overload one side, maybe fake it and run it right. I mean, you know, if they come hard on their right, you run it to your right kind of away and just need one or two blocks. It just depends on what they have in their playbook or arsenal for that. But now we've given Red Bank a short field. <coughs> That's where you talk about what we talked about in the pregame. you got to flip the field, if anything. Mm -hmm. Wolves haven't been able to do that. So here we go, first down for... The Bulldogs, and this is a quick hitter to Byers, but Byers snuffed at the right of the line of scrimmage. You have Plants and uh, Aaron Smith. Bajakis. And Bajakis all right there at the line of scrimmage for no gain. It's going to be second and 10 for the Bulldogs. So Red Bank started out passing game a little rough, so they've went to the run game, but this is where the Wolves have to be careful. Like I said, play action right here. Wagner pull it out, look for something over the middle. Wagner from the shotgun, some pressure, rolls out to the left, and it looks like Dar had a shot at him. Now he throws it, and that's going to be picked off by Dane Anderson, as that was intended for Minnick, and a nice pick off by Dane Anderson down at the Kane Wolves 18-yard line. Yeah, so got pressure on him, got him uncomfortable, which we talked about, held up, tried to make the play. Anderson running right behind it, hip for hip makes the play. And you said he's only had, what, three interceptions all yeah, year, and the Wolves yeah, had the two Wolves tonight, two. you know what I mean? So this defense has been, you know, I mean, we've right been there. prepped very well. And in the offense, we've done all right. I mean, just kind of stalled down there, had a chance. So right here is a big thing for the Wolves with 9.38 to go here into the half and only down by the score of 7 nothing. Got to get some offense going here. Like I said, I, I still like to see this Dar isolation over there. He has size on 12 uh, close over there on that right side. So that's something I think you'd maybe take a shot at. So Zook out of shotgun, and here comes Plants in motion, and they're going to hand it to Plants. Well, no, that's uh, West, right? Yep, out to the West. 20, yep. So Sam West picks up close Nifty to run. about four, maybe three, they're going to say. So second and seven, number one on the tackle, Orts as he make, brings it out to the 20. Yeah, nifty run by West there, a little jet sweep. Nothing outside, cut it in behind the center and was able to pick up positive yards, mm -hmm. and that's the important thing. And now the Wolves going to trip receivers out here to the left, looks Isolate like West, Dar, and Shemansky split left, right? Or no, Dar out to the right by There's himself. There's no safety, and that is a, a matchup I, I know they need to exploit at some point here tonight. So Zook out of the shotgun, now West in motion. They fake it to West, and they try to throw this little flare pass out here to Shemansky, and that falls incomplete. And if, even if he catches that, I'll tell you what, looked like Red Bank ready for that as Ross was right out there along with uh, number five, Minnick. Looked yeah, like and the Wolves, you know, few, they've ran the ball. You know, they're going to run the ball. That's their, you know, right now. But when it's hard to run the ball or have play action when your running game's kind of at a null at the moment. So, but that was kind of there, but Red Bank was swarming. 
So third and seven. As the clock stops, 8.52 to go here into the second quarter, and the Wolves down by the score, seven nothing. Lundin split out here to the left. Now Lundin moves over to the right in motion. Setting up the screen out here as that was intended out here for Sammy West, and that's going to just fall incomplete as the pressure as Zook just kind of, you know, was able to get it off. but uh, It was there. It was there. Pressure was coming, and that falls incomplete, so the Wolves forced the punt. And that looked like that might have been, had some room out there, right? Yeah, that, I mean, that screen was there. Red Bank didn't even feel it. They had one guy out there, and our four blockers had just, Fell a little short. So Eli stands back inside his 10 as Orts and Kale stand, and that's going to be blocked again, and that's going to be into the end zone, and that's going to be a touchdown. There is a flag, I see, but it's going to be a touchdown. We'll see the, what the flags are, but, boy, that's the second block from the punt. He may be using that as his bean bag. Yeah, it might be. Marking it. I think he's saying Red Bank had it, and then he flipped it forward. So two block punts tonight, in both times into the red zone. You know, one where they, they were able to start at their own 15, and then uh, the Wolves were able to hold them. But this one looks like it's going to be down inside the one. And Red Bank's found a weakness in the special teams, and that's the third time they've exploited it there. <coughs> So we'll see what the refs are talking about. You got some scores out there? I, I, you, ahead, if you don't, Zach, I do. Okay, Go Chris got some scores. Yeah, I've got Montauk Central Clarion, zero at the first quarter. Otto Aldred, eight. Cowdy, nothing. Moshannon Valley, 14. Curransville, zero. St. Mary's, 14. Dubois, seven. ECC, seven. Bucktail, zero. Uh, let's see here. Keystone, seven. And Brockway, seven. And Brookville, eight. And Bradford, zero. Cameron County, three. 30 and Sheffield, nothing. Hmm. Wow. And that's going to be a penalty against uh, Red, Bank. Red Bank. So instead of being at the one yard line, they're going to take it out to the 11, but it will still be their ball. I think he's saying he hit it forward on purpose, which is a 10 yard penalty. Okay. That was his that's motion. You can't you throw it forward, yeah. you can't advance a fumble like that. And I mean, he was right on top of it. I think it was a good call just by the way they had it night. So. <clears throat> so the Bulldogs will start their drive here at the Kane Wolves 11 with 8.41 to go here into the half, and it's it, 7 nothing in favor of the Bulldogs, the undefeated Red Bank Valley Bulldogs. And I'll tell you what, Kane's been hanging with them here, so. Backs against the wall right here, though, Zach, as far as, uh, you know, the, the, the turnovers. But you know what? Kane had two turnovers itself, too, though. So Wagner out of the shotgun with Byers into the backfield to hand this to Byers and right up the middle, Byers inside the five, gonna be knocked down about at the four yard line. And it looks like Dane Anderson, number two and 26, also Luke Eli out there for the, for the Wolves, but it's gonna be a pickup of about seven. Clear up some pronunciation for Red Bank. It's Roop with a long U, uh, Minnick, so, and Klaus like house just so for future. Shag Wagner again hands this off and he's going to be hit right at the line of a scrimmage as Byers looks like uh, Dane Anderson finishes him off. S stood up out there by number uh, 27 for the Wolves and that is Blaine Good out there on that cornerback spot for the Wolves. So good job there by Good and Anderson. It's going to bring up a third and going to call it four. Third down and four, and the ball inside right at the Kane Wolves five-yard line. So Wagner again from the shotgun. And Byers again back to pass, and that's going to be incomplete as Wagner's pass sails over the head of Minnick. Looked like Blaine Good out there on a solo out there on the island. Does a nice job, and that's going to bring up a fourth down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, he had to, I think they are looking for a fade, and it almost seemed like uh, Red Bank, they thought maybe back shoulder more, just the way he turned his hip so quick, and it floated. He didn't have the leverage, and a good job by Good out there to close that gap. So a big fourth down for both these teams here. They can get a first down inside the one, so it's fourth and four from 
the five. As Wagner again gonna roll to the right, looks to pass and he has a man, that falls incomplete. So the Wolves, big defense holds as uh, they started that drive at the 11. So the Wolves defense comes up big right there after the block punt and hanging in here with 7.24 to go into the half and the Wolves only down by a touchdown, seven nothing. Yeah, so Wolves defense, you cannot ask for a better performance. The only score they gave up was after one of the block punts. They had 15 yards. It's hard to hold a team, but now they've done it. Yeah. But now this offense, this is where, you know, and you're backed up. But do you take a shot here? you got to do something to change your momentum. And Sharba really had some good pressure on the quarterback, Wagner. Made him kind of throw that. And look, Shemansky was out here onto that flat. So a good job by the Wolves. But, like, backed up now. You're right. Now's time to, you know. Maybe you got to just take a chance. You got to chuck it out of there, and and they're going to be a timeout by by Coach the Smith. Wolves. Yep, by uh, Coach to get everybody on the same page. Yep, and I think a uh, 300 club winner was Ann Kane for the second quarter. Guys. Second quarter, Ann Kane. I believe so. You can check me on that, but I thought that's what I'd heard. Yeah, I think you're right. Ann Kane won the second quarter up yep. here for the 300 club. So good job. Yes. And are they going to do all of them tonight? From the no, they'll no, still do them the last just, game. Okay, yeah, it'll still happen the, the last game. Yep. Okay, they're going to wait till the following, the, the last, last game of the game? year. Last yep. home, I'm sorry, yep. last home game yep. of the year, yeah. Okay. It's just senior act tonight just because it's a little potentially warmer, not raining sideways, yeah. although it is pretty chilly out here. Hey, what a game we got going we on out there, huh, game. Chris? My God, getting some good film coverage down there by you and Jimmy Gravel. We're, we're trying anyway. Had it go out for a little bit, had some technical difficulties, but got it back. It I got heard the score Joe back. say that to you a couple yeah, times, you know, but uh, you guys do great, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Hey, how critical like this is right here, though, really. This <laughs> yeah, is very this is huge. If we could get drive and just take the clock off. Yeah. Yeah, we've been This is where I say take a, take a chance, Steve. Take take your shot here. I yeah. mean, they're, they're not – they know the Wolves passing game has struggled this year a little bit at times, and other times it's looked like a million bucks. So they're just inviting them to do that, but we're, I think we're going to have everything tight here. So it looks like plants into the backfield. It is. As Zook comes up under center – and West at the tailback, and they're going to hand it to West, and West is hit right at the line of scrimmage, and that's a big hit there by number 50 again, that Ross. Jeez, I'll tell you, they, they just shot that gap and was able to, and add Caden Adams on the tackle also, but boy, that was a big time hit as they try to get off that left edge. Now under seven minutes to go, and that backs them up. That's a loss of two, so that's a, they're going to back it up at the two-yard line, second and 12 for the Wolves. And, yeah, this is tough sledding right here. You're, you're right. Maybe you got to let something fly. So Zook up under shotgun, hands off to Plants, and Plants hit at the line but able to get it out to about the five. Finally brought down out there by Caden Adams also on the tackle for the – was Rupp, Rupp. And that's going to be third down and 10 with six and a half to go here. And Plants now back at the, it looks like Eli and Plants now, right? It looks like Plants out at the tailback spot along with Luke Eli at the fullback spot for the Wolves. Two seniors in there. Like to see some play action here maybe. And Zook now goes under center. You have Eli or uh, Shemansky split out here to the left. Play clock down under 2 1. And they just get it off. No, nope, they're going to call timeout. a timeout against the. Uh, yep, the Wolves are going to use a second timeout. Looked like he might have got that off, too. In the pros, they do let you go. Like the pros, they yeah, let they you, you know, do they, the whole yeah. mechanism. That, that would have been Tom close. Tom Brady's playing to give you 10 extra. Yeah, and yeah. it looked like they were going to do the pass play there. Yeah, and then it. I just I just feel like you need that. I mean, worst case scenario, it goes incomplete. You're still in the same spot you are now. If you can bust one, get a penalty. Yeah. You, and if you could flip the field, he'd say he yeah. bust one for 90. Yep. You've just changed the whole momentum of this yep. game. And but now you you know I understand you're back down. And our defense, defense is been playing right. well. I mean, so that's only giving up seven. I you mean, know, that's it's Smith and Sophie's in Berlin and them guys. They know. I just feel like now maybe try to take the top off. Just you got to do something to loosen this up because we haven't been able to successfully really move the ball. Since the opponent kind of yeah. left the game. Another <coughs> score update here. Uh, Brookville 15 now over Bradford. 
and Port over Union AC Valley, 22 to nothing. Oh, wow. Port showed up down there. They yeah. sure did. St. Mary's putting putting another point on, uh, 20 to seven over Dubois. And Keystone and Brockway still tied up at sevens. That's a game we need to watch because we travel down there next week. So here we go, third and 10, back at their own three yard line. And they're gonna hand this up, first guy up, and that's Eli, and he takes it out. Maybe just across the five, off to about the six yard line. So it's gonna bring up a fourth down for the Wolves. And 5.30 to go here, and the Wolves up, or down by a score of seven, nothing. And Eli's gonna have to kick now from back into the back end zone. If I'm right, Red Bank may not even go after this one. They may allow a return because of the field position. And there's a penalty now. As Orts and Kale stand back around the 40-yard line. And Kane's got too many men on the field, so that's going to be half the distance. So, yeah, instead now it's going to be back to two and a half. So, yeah. That's even going to make it harder for the, for him to get this punt off, I'll tell you. That's going to be have to be very, very quick. In a way, at this tough spot. So here we go. Eli stands into the back of the end zone, and he gets it off, and it's going to bounce at the 30 and take a bounce to the 35, picked up. The 35, Kale down to the 30, 25, fumble, ball on the ground, picked up by the Bulldogs. And they're gonna call that a touchdown as that ball came out. And that was picked up by, what's that, number 13. And that's Cole Bish. Picks that right up in midair. Man, I'll tell you what, that was a huge, huge play. And it looked like it could have been another turnover for in favor of the Wolves. And right Bish there. picks that up and scampers the next 25 yards for the touchdown. So, wow, that was big for the Bulldogs. And on to do the extra kick is uh, Klaus. And the kick is going to be up and no good by Klaus. So... The Bulldogs up 13 nothing, and I'll tell you what, it's been a battle, and right there was another big play as Eli was able to get that off. He hits at the 30, and he picks it up about at the 35. Ro ro takes it all the way down to the you know, left sidelines, and I I'm not sure who, who hit him first. Did you see? Nice. It was kind of hard, but the ball comes up in the air, and right Bish there. picks it in the air mid-flight and takes it the rest of the way. And there was a couple of Kane Wolves right over there with them, you know. And uh, if, uh, the Wolves now, we're talking uh, kick return. <coughs> be very careful. We'll see Red Bank try to maybe try it on it. Because, I mean, right now the Wolves offense is showing nothing. That makes Red Bank probably that nervous. But at the same time, I mean, it's not that it's not possible. Don't get me wrong. It's just they're trying to find their rhythm. But this is where good teams <coughs> like to put a dagger in it and just any hopes just kind of dash them. But we'll see what – they decide to do. Yeah, and the Wolves have one timeout remaining here with 4.54 to go. And I said, down 13 nothing. It looks like West and Dane Anderson going to stand back inside their 10. Yeah, right here is – see what happens, man. You need some good field position. And the kick is going to be a long kick, going to be taken by Anderson at the 10, the 15, the 20. Takes it outside to 25 to 30, 35, 40, and there's a penalty. It's probably going to be a block in the back against the Wolves or a hold. They got a hold. Yep, so that's going to bring it back. And that looks like that was about at the 25 yard line. Is, Ruff is uh, right on it. Yep. And Anderson was able to take that out to the 40, but now it's going to be taken back, and we'll see where they do spot it. But I think it's going to be inside about the 15. So we'll see where they do spot it. But, uh, yeah, it looks like it happened right around the 25. Looks like the Wolves will start this at about at their own 15. In the last couple of drives, the Wolves have been backed up without good field position. You know, that kind of takes the play. You know, it does. It makes the playbook shrink up because it's just kind of hard to 
to let it fly. But right now, down and, and I tell you, another thing is, I mean, you didn't want to kind of make a mistake because you're only down at the time was yeah. only seven. Now it's 13. Yeah, so tough decision. Yeah. So here the we way go. Your defense has been playing. Yeah. So here we go for the Wolves. Schmansky and Dane Anderson split out here to the right as Lundeen and Dar split to the left. As out of the shotgun with West into the backfield. Fake to West. And they throw this bubble screen out here to Anderson. And that's going to fall incomplete. That was a good thing that was incomplete because he had been tackled for probably for about a five-yard loss. So the clock does stop with 440 to go in the, before the half, and the Wolves down 13 nothing. And they're going to have to move this right here to get get something going. Got to get some field because you don't want to give Red Bank the ball again here. And Red Bank actually gets the ball the second half to start. So second down for the Wolves, second and 10 at their own 14, 440 to go here at half. Trip receiver split to the right. Zook back to pass. Looking right. Throws. Looking downfield. And that's going to be picked off by number 12. And that is. And that's a Klaus out there for the Bulldogs. And that's going to be out of around the 35-yard line. Does that look like that was intended out there for, for Dar. Dar? But Klaus. It was there. It's just under thrown there. He got hit when he threw it. It was there. It just Klaus made a play on it. Yep. And that's what you're talking about, letting it fly. You know, I mean, really. Yeah, I mean, that was and, – and, and he did. And like you said, he got hit kind of just yeah, right just when right he – right when he did it. Yep. Ross came flying. So first down for the Bulldogs at the Kane Wolves 37-yard line with 4.34 to go, and they are up 13-0. Wagner going to do this pitch to Orts. Orts down the sideline, 30-25-20. Tackled there by Shemansky and also number two, Dane Anderson. And that Dane Anderson's having a heck of a year for the Wolves. He really is. He's only a junior this year. And they're actually going to mark him out at the 22 there, Steve. That he fell out of bounds. Yeah, he stepped out. But that was there. It's just that jet look again, and they just get more blockers than the edge can hold, and their speed shows. Yep. So first down at the 22-yard line of the Wolves. Wagner and Byers into the backfield, and another jet sweep to Minnick the other side as Minnick tries to get it out, and he does. Finally draw it out there by Plants. And, boy, I'll tell you what, a couple of Kane Wolves, you know, had a chance at him, and they just, he just kept on going outside, outside, outside and was able to turn the corner and pick up about six. Yeah, and that, that play is interesting because it's a little touch pass. And uh, that speed, you already got your momentum going that way, so you have the upper hand on the uh, defense coming off the ball. And that is a gain of six. It's going to be second and four, and the ball at the Kane Wolves 17-yard line with 4.17 remaining here before half, and the Bulldogs up by the score of 13-0. Again, Wagner shotgun, and they do a counter, and the Wolves sniff that out Aaron as Kane Smith. Sharba and Aaron Smith make a big tackle on Byers as they tried to reverse trap play, and they shot the gap, and they made a nice tackle, and that's a big loss. It's going to be third and nine for the Bulldogs, bringing it back out close to, what are you going to say, about the 22-yard line. So third down and nine at the 22-yard line of the Wolves. Wagner out of shotgun as Orts moves in motion. Wagner looking downfield, throws out here to Orts at the 20, at the 15, 10, 5, Touchdown was Orts as that was just a nice bubble type screen set up out into the flat and Orts was one on one was able to elude the Kane defenders and took it in for a touchdown and that puts him up 19 and nothing. Yeah, and it's that jet sweep motion and that time he faked it and all Orts did was come out, go off the tight end, go to the flat, two on three, good ball, good catch, blocking downfield and a touchdown for Red Bank. Now it looks like they're going to go for two-point conversion here, up 19 nothing, And it got uh, three, four deep, yep, out to the left. Everybody spread way out. And down under two, down under one. They call a timeout. That, that was all the begoggle there as they didn't even get nothing off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah the Kane defense playing tough, too. You know, it's just one bad bounce. It's only 12-0. Yeah, yeah. And a 
a couple of bounces for the Wolves. I mean, we, you know, we 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 could have had a score here. Yeah, and it's tough. And so we'll see what they do here if they just go for uh, two. But <coughs> I think they're going to still show that that wide Oregon two point conversion look. Yeah. And all they do on that, Steve, is they spread them out. They see where your man advantage is. So either Wagner may just try to run it in uh, based on what Kane shows. If not, they run left and just hope it works. Looks like seven on seven a little bit, right? Just three yeah. up, three mil, three guys on the front line, the center and the, what, the two guards right next to you? Yep. And then uh, everybody else is spread way out. I mean, you're right, as Wagner... Stands back at his 10. Looks like he's going to pass out here to the left side on that bubble screen, and that's going to be a touch. But I think there's going to be a hold out yeah, there. Yeah, I think he hooked him. Yeah, so there's a flag, and that's going to be a hold against the Red they're, Bank. They're going to get it on Ross. He hooked Eli, I think. Because you had, what, five receivers split way out there to the left side? Yeah, and they went to where the man, if Kane only had four out there, so that's obviously two yards with girth, but... Good job by the Wolves. So that falls uh, a penalty. So what we're going to do now, they're going to try to kick it? I think they'll do it again. They'll go for two. I mean, 10 yards for this offense ain't much. No. <laughs> and now they'll be starting their two-point right conversion. Where are they going to start it? At the 15, yeah. Yep. Starts normally at the two, but now it's going to be at the 15 after the penalty. So uh, here we go, 19 nothing in favor of the Bulldogs, 3.38 to go. Before the half, two-point conversion. Wagner stands back to throw, and he's intended out here for Orts, and that's nice play there by number 11, and that is Daniel Paul for the Wolves. He has. He knocks that down as that was intended out there for Orts, and Daniel Paul, man, number 11. Two big plays comes tonight. in. He did, yeah, so... You know what? 19 nothing. 3:38 to go. Got one timeout left. You know, it be, well, surely would be nice to be able to get a drive and put some points on before the before the half. Yeah, because Red Bank does receive in the second half. Yeah. I mean, just methodically here, 19. I mean, you know, it just doesn't seem like it should yeah. be like that. I mean, he had the fluke punt. Kane's defense has really shut their offense down except for that one drive and a short field on a yeah. block. You know, yeah. that's why they say special teams is one-third of it. <coughs> yeah, no doubt about it. Port 22, and, and, Union and, AC Valley nothing at the half. Port what? Port 22, Union AC oh. Valley nothing. Brookville 15, Bradford 0. Brockway 13, Keystone 7. Hmm. And Dubois is still down to St. Mary's by the score of 20 to 13 at the half. And the kick on its way is going to be taken by Anderson at the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30. Going to be bottled up right about at the 30-yard line with Dane Anderson. So that's going to be our best field position we've had in a while here to start with 3.30 to go here before half. And the Wolves down by 19 to nothing. And I tell you, like the air kind of when Zampona left the game. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying, but it's yeah. just kind of you know being your senior type leader, and we're not deep. And it just kind of when he went out, you could just you know, I mean. But we'll see. Uh, and Sammy West, tenth grader, coming in yeah. in Phil, and then. But they, now they just they know okay Zampona's out. We're just going to pin our ears back and go because Kane's passing game hasn't shown much. So now yep. that's where it gets hard. But uh, I'll see what the Wolves come up with here. So it looks like Shemansky and West going to split way out to the right. You have Anderson and Dar split here to the left. Now Anderson in motion, and it looked like the play clock ran out. Yep, it did. So delay a game against the Wolves. And that's going to be backed up. It, back at the 25 so instead of first and 10 it's going to be first and 15 for the wolves again with 330 remaining here before the half and the wolves down by 19 to nothing again same formation for the wolves west split out to the right along with uh shemansky and anderson and dar split here to the left and Zook back to pass, and it's intended for playing. Oh, a nice catch by Dane Anderson. 
across midfield down in the Red Bank Valley territory. They're going to say out of bounds at the 47-yard line. What, what a, a nice catch by Anderson. That was over the head oh. and stayed in bounds. I, he almost acted like he thought maybe he wasn't going to catch it, but a good throw by Zilk and a good catch. And there's that take the top off, loosen that defense up a little bit. And a nice block in the backfield by uh, Addison Plants to give Zook that extra second to get rid of it. Yep, good job there by the Wolves. Good pass and an excellent catch by Anderson. So, again, the Wolves going for the four, four receivers. Back to pass is Zook. Has some time, throws it downfield again for Anderson. That's going to be intercepted by Orts at the 20. And Orts at the 25. Anderson brings him down about at the 27-yard yeah, line. Anderson just overthrew him as Dane Anderson makes the tackle. But that was intended for Anderson and just, yeah, just kind of overthrew it a little bit. So a big pass and now the Wolves turn it over again. So with 3.14 to go here, the Wolves defense gonna have to hold strong to keep us down by 19 nothing. And you just wonder about this Red Bank Valley offense. Like you said, they score quickly. I think they, they're they not going to uh, be afraid to try to throw the ball, I don't think. So Wagner back at shotgun. Trip receivers split here to the right, and they're going to hand this right off to Byers. But Byers is going to be hit at the line of scrimmage. That looks like Addison Plants, the first guy there. Yeah, Plants comes up and makes a nice hit on Byers. And Plants gets his hands on you, Steve. You're not getting away from it. Yeah, he, he's been had a big year this year. He's for, been for, for the three Wolves. years. Yeah. So the clock runs at uh, 2.50 to go here again. Uh, Red Bank looking for a trip receiver split out here to the right. Wagner shotgun with Byers into the backfield. Wagner back to pass. Some pressure from Smith as he rolling, and he's going to throw this one away. The Wolves' as, pass uh, the, defense has been excellent tonight. Sure, surely has been some pressure, and uh, – I'll tell you what, uh, number 11, Daniel Paul, out here playing a heck of a game as he was one-on-one -on -one out here with Minnick, and that's looked like who he was going for, and pressure from Smith in the front line. and uh, Yeah, good, Smith was coming. And a good job out here, so it falls incomplete, stops the clock with 2.38 to go. Third and 10, the ball back at the Cane Wolves, 28. Wagner rolling left, and there's a flag, and that's going to be against Red Bank, false start. That's going to Brock move them back 10, so our five, third and 15 it's going to be. Yeah, they left the, the receiver out there, flanked out way out, took off before the snap. So third and 15, and the ball clock stops at 235, and that brings it back inside the Kane 23-yard line, or the uh, Bulldogs 23-yard line. Yeah, the Wolves' defense has held up well when their backs aren't against the wall, you know, that field, so secondary's been there. They've They've they figured it out, they game planned well, and just unfortunately haven't been able to catch that big break. So third and 15, and with 2.35 to go here, Wagner again, shotgun, buyers in backfield, looks for that bubble screen out into the left flat, and it's complete, and he's gonna be tackled for maybe right back at the original line of scrimmage, and that's number 12, Mason Klaus. And Scott Shemansky on the tackle. So the Wolves defense comes up big right there. Yep, kept everything in front of them. And no punt. Is this the first punt? This is for Red Bank. And that is number, is that five, Minnick? Yeah, I believe so. Nope. I believe so. Can't get a number. Yeah, I think stand. it is Minnick, number five. And Dane Anderson going to stand back inside his 30-35. And he hits a wobbly one. It's going to... Hit at the 40 and go down inside the Cane Wolves 37 yard line, down at the 37. So with a minute 50 to go here and the Wolves down 19 nothing with one time, no, no timeouts. They used their last timeout, right? So no timeouts, 147 to go here before half and again down 19 nothing. Yeah, their defense has played excellent. Excellent, excellent. Wagner's only had the running touchdown and then the throw one to Orts. You know, and the defense has been there. Secondary's held up, and a few, you know, players that have been thrown in and kind of more of a nickel look rather than that four down lineman because what Red Bank brings, like Paul and them, they've stepped up here. Well, like you said, the yards that Wagner's had this year, I mean, the Wolves yeah. really, yeah. I mean, what, three uh, interceptions he had, two, two tonight. So, yeah. 
So here we go for the Wolves. Looks like Eli and Plants. Plants going to be the tailback, Eli the up back. And they hand this to Plants, and Plants out to the 40. Pick up of about three, tackled out there by number 51. Is that Ross again? Yep. <coughs> and the Bulldogs use a timeout. Yeah, and so I don't know here if he just wants to get his defense adjusted or maybe he wants to touch the ball again. I mean, you can't take him with you to the half. No. So. And that's a pickup of about two, going to call it second and eight. Definitely something I think that looked like a timeout to communicate something. And you're right, that Ross kid is all over the place, huh? He's, My God. He's, he's, he's an animal. He's an animal. This Red Bank team, very athletic. I mean, the Wolves are hanging in there. Oh, I mean, it's a great game. Yeah, the two. If you take away the block punt and the weird fumble, it's still seven zip. Yeah, it's just been a it's been a great great game. They like said we just need a little bit of you know just something, something a couple yeah. Just can't catch a break right now, and that's sometimes just unfortunately how sports go. You know, it's like a NBA player or a college basketball player shoots the three, and that bounce that uh, yeah. on that yeah. punt. Return there Just and that bounce. I mean, it looked like the bounce wolves your were, yeah. way, you know, and it wolves didn't. Wolves are going to have it. And that what? Bish kid picked it right out of midair and took, took it. off. <laughs> but you know, you're like a. <coughs> but that's why you play the games. Like I always say, player, yeah. A three point shooter. There's some games you're 0 for 20, you know, but you got to keep shooting. So now the wolves look like they're going to go into three backs here, right? Uh, Anderson back in the backfield with Plants and Eli, and then it's under center, and they're going to pitch it to Anderson and then or to uh, Plants and Plants. Across the 40, tackled there by number 12, Klaus again, and they use a timeout, so they stop the clock again. With a uh, minute 30 to go, Red Bank stops it. Is uh, It's going to be a bring up a third and going to say about seven for the Wolves. Yeah, and I think basically he's thinking, I can't take these to the half. If my offense can get another possession with the way, you know, why not? Yeah, yeah. And actually, that was Bish on the tackle. I was just talking about him making yeah. the big play on the special teams, and he was on the tackle. And that, like I said, them plays are there, but Red Bank's defense is so fast laterally, sideline to sideline. It closes quick. Yeah, you're right. I, I, that's a lot of team speed that they have. And that's huge. So it's going to be a third and seven for the Wolves. At and, their that, own and Red Bank will be out of timeouts. So now if you're the Wolves, do you risk throwing it and stopping the clock, or do you run it and just run it down? You know, you got a minute 31, you run it, 20, 30. If you give it back to him with under 50 seconds. But he's also thinking they have to punt. I come after it, I'm already three for four on blocking it. Well, the Wolves are spreading it out with Zook out of the shotgun. Now here comes West in motion, and they do a counter trap to Plants, and Plants is going to be – Hit right at the line of scrimmage by Brandon Ross again. Brings him down. Boy, that kid is a animal out there. Is he a senior on that yeah, program? So. He is. Number 51. <laughs> Ross. Yeah, six foot a junior. Say. Junior. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's definitely a tough football player. Yeah, he's playing an excellent. So it looks like the Wolves are going to go for this. Oh, they're going to yeah, just try to. snap. Yeah. And if Kane right. missed it there, if they would have snapped it, Red Bank had 12 players on the field. So it could have been a free play. So the Wolves are going to run it right down to one, and they're going to use their last timeout. Yep. So that was all right. With 43 seconds, I get that, running a lot of the clock out, right? Yeah. 43 seconds to go here, and the Wolves are going to have to punt. Yeah, job there by the – a great job by the Kane Wolves defense so far. And their offense has moved the ball. We yeah. haven't been able to score, but we've moved it at times. Yeah, at times. Yep. And I'll tell you, Red Bank knows that they've been in the, in the game tonight. Yeah, they're, they're their there's, offense especially. Yeah. You can kind yeah. of see on offense they're kind of looking at each other yeah. like, hey, this really hasn't happened to us this year. Yeah. I mean, Wolves' defense has played lights out. Surely has. And I don't think Red Bank came up here thinking that was going to happen. Yeah, you know and, I mean? and these games are hard, even on the Red Bank side of coaching. You know, they kind of just run through everybody, and they have for two years. I mean, we experienced that. Mm -hmm. And some of those trap games, you know, you're like, uh, you don't see it too much in high school like you do in college. But, man, uh, you got to 
team like Kane, Ridgeway, they're not – they're in every game. They're just yep. missing that one or two plays. Yep. If I'm the Wolves here, I'm kicking this ball right out of bounds. No chance of return, nothing. So Eli to punt, and there was maybe a movement against uh, the Wolves, I think. We'll see what happens. Yep. Illegal procedure against the Wolves. They went pretty quick with that because – 52 yeah, was coming yeah, on block. Yeah, he was coming, and they went pretty quick. So now that moves it back at the 32-yard line. Eli going to have to stand back inside his 20 with 42 six ticks remaining as Orts and Kale stand back inside their 35-yard line. And you're right. I would think that, too. Just try to go get out. it off and kick it out of bounds. I yeah. don't even care where it goes. Yeah. So the referees, yeah, I don't Maybe know. Maybe a Look play clock problem. Uh, it's not Game resetting. Clock. Game clock problem yep. as well. He'll pump it here. Again. So here go. goes, ready to go here is Eli. Yeah, stands back at his 20, and the Wolves down by score. 19-0. Snap is good. Eli hits a quick one. He hits it right straight down the middle of the field, taken there by Orts, or Kale it is, and he tries to take it outside, and he dodges Dodge is still on his feet across midfield at the 50. Funny Aaron Smith brings him down. But I'll tell you what, Kale, he made a couple of guys miss. Yeah. And uh, Aaron Smith was able to finish big hit. Up. Yeah. I'll tell you what, then there was a big block out there on plants. It's pretty physical. Oh, yeah. It's a physical game. And uh, that ran 15 seconds off, so that was kind of good. He ran around 28, nothing behind you. If you're the Wolves here. Yep, 28 ticks before half, down by 19 nothing. Right at midfield here with the just Bulldogs. Keep, so there it looks like they're going to run trip receivers out here to the right. And I think you're going to see Orts touch the ball here one of these times. Well, Wagner, now Orts in motion. And Double they're going to throw this little screen nope, pass out here to Orts at the 50, 45, 40, 30. That's a hold and out of six. bounds. Yep, it's and it looks back. like some flag coming out. As Dane Anderson on the tackle with Orts along with uh, Plants right there. And uh, they're going to see where they're going to mark this penalty with 21 ticks remaining before the half is over. And it's getting a little bit physical out there now. I'll too. tell you what. Yeah. That was clearly a hold, though. If you keep his hands inside there for Red Bank, it's not. But he had Anderson out here on the outer shoulder play, and that's right in front of the side judge. He's not going to miss that in a that type of play. And Anderson still makes the tackle, too. Yeah, so they'll mark him back. And will bring up about first and one. I always disagreed with that coming from the spot. I think it should go from the line of scrimmage where it started. Yeah, yeah but that's spot. Yeah, that's how they do it, spot yep. foul. But took seven seconds off. So Wagner out of shotgun again. Trip receivers to the left. They got five of them out, two to the right. Some pressure by Sammy West, and he throws it. It's complete out in the flats at the 30. Captain tackle the there, and the out. ball's out as Dar comes up with the big tackle. Man, there is some bodies flying out there. The clock it looked should like be going, though, had once the, had are Minnick, set. That was on Minnick, right? Looked yep. like the tackle. Or Dar the, popped it loose. Yep. And the clock does stop because of the first down. The clock stops. Oh, they, they said he was out of bounds. And so now our spotter here said the ball did go out, so they okay. So it will stop. Seven seconds. Boy, nice last hit play. by Dar. Yep. So last play should be Wagner again, shotgun, trip receivers to the right, two to the left. Wagner back, lets it fly down field here, and, t and that's going to be Paul, incomplete. Right on it. As Daniel Paul, one second remaining here, as that was intended out there for Kale, and Daniel Paul, one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's played, held up. He, he surely has, and there's one second remaining here before the end of the half. Yep. So one play. One play. So second down and 10 at the 26-yard line of the Wolves. So again, trip receivers to the right. Two to the left for the Bulldogs. They're going Wagner for the shotgun. Some oh, pressure Smith. by Smith. Wagner rolls to the right, fires down midfield, and he's going to be tackled at the five-yard line as Kale 
Make the reception and Sammy West on the big tackle. And at the end of the half, hold on, there's is, a flag here, Steve. There's a oh, there's a flag. Okay. Defensive member half can end on a defensive penalty. Yep. And they are talking to. Uh, yep. It's going to be a penalty. You're right. Defensive penalty. It can't end the half. That would be huge because they could decline it, still get a play inside the five. <coughs> And so we are we'll, going back to the studio. We're staying right yep, here, guys. Yeah, right. There's a flag. They're talking about what's going on out there. It looks like it's going to be against the Wolves. So it looks like there probably will be one more play before the half. Let's see if we figure this out. But, boy, a nice tackle there by Sam West. I, and it was kind of away from the play, so I don't – holding. Holding way out there. So holding against the Wolves. So one untimed down. So, kind of confused on how you – well. Yeah, we'll see where they mark it, but there is going to be one well, play left. They'll decline and get the ball at the four. Oh, is that what they're going to do? Then wouldn't that count as a play? And then uh, – Yeah, I believe so. So then that would be the end. So they're going to mark it off. Yep. Down at the 15 is going to be where it's going to be at, right? The hold must have taken place at the 25, so – it's going to be the last play, unless there's another defensive uh, penalty. It looks like they're going to try to kick a field goal. Yep. It's good practice, if anything, and Red Bank's thinking, you know. So Klaus on for about a 33-yard field goal for the Bulldogs as they're up by the score of 19 nothing. Yeah, that was kind of a weird play, a hold against the Wolves, and uh, – Still some referee talking over there. Yeah. I think they're discussing if I decline it, but then the play would count, therefore putting it to the half, yeah. so they'd have to accept the penalty. Yeah. That's what the referee or the coach is wanting to get. Uh, yeah, he declines it, play yeah. counts, therefore the half yeah. would end. So now so you accept Klaus the penalty from the original line of scrimmage. Going to try a 32-yard field goal here with the last play before the half. 19 nothing in favor of Red Bank. The snap, the hold, the kick, and it is good, to the right. No good. no good. So that ends the half at 19 nothing in favor of Red Bank Valley. We'll be back for no, the we third won't. quarter. No? We're staying here. Oh, we're staying yeah, here. Yeah, we're staying here. So talk about football until the band uh Oh, so takes we got to talk about some football. At least till the band starts playing. Okay. Well, I tell you what, that was an entertaining first half, if you ask me. I mean, it really yeah. was a lot of Wolves things going on. Defense played excellent. Defense played well. Uh, the offense, we moved the ball at times, as you said, had a couple of pass plays that you know just 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 missed. And uh, uh, Zampona, uh, hopefully that he's going to be okay, but he has not returned to the game and. Uh, Said that senior leadership, it just kind of, but you know what? They they held up. They really did. 19 nothing and uh, a high potent offense that Red Bank, you know, has showed all year. Like I said, they they the Kane shut them down. Yeah, they 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 uh, you know played very very well. So Red Bank will receive the second half kickoff. But yeah, you're right. They they've been in a game and a lot of. A lot of tough hits out here tonight. I mean, big time oh, yeah, it's physical. hits, very physical. And you said it even got a little bit chippy right there towards the end. And, uh, you know, we talk about this, too, uh, throughout the year. I Let's love see. the way. Are we to the band, Chris? Uh, yeah, so it looks like the, the schedule changed a little yeah. bit. And Red Bank Band is going first, so why don't we send it back to the studio for a few words from our sponsors, guys? Okay. Sounds good. So, Joe, if you're in there, uh, let's send it back for a few words from our sponsors. Seven XCY's halftime show is sponsored by Lobo Fitness at 27 Fraley Street in Kane. Offering classes for all ages, personal training, and 24-7 access. They can be found on Facebook by searching Lobo Fitness, and their phone number is 814-561-1286. Also brought to you by Kane Liquid Fuels and the Sparkle Car Wash in Kane. Kane Liquid Fuels can deliver on and off-road fuels and offer a 24-hour fueling station at their location on Oak Street. Sparkle Car Wash over on North Fraley Street can pump your gas for you and also offers hoagies and more in their convenience store. The Merrill family thanks you for your support and say that the heart of our community is what makes them strong. 
In celebration of the opening of the first Passive House commercial retrofit building in the U.S. at 63 Fraley Street, music artist Van Wagner has written and recorded this song to pay tribute to the building now known as Six and Kane. Up on Route 6, there's a buzz going round. Something new is taking shape in the heart of a town. Along the Allegheny Forest, where the forest still remains. Something big is going on, it's going on. Invited to the grand opening of Six and Kane, Saturday, October 8th, an on-site open house from 9.30 to 2, including storytelling theater, a walk down memory lane with area citizens, tours of the building, lunch with the tradespeople, and more. The Kane Volunteer Fire Department will have a chicken barbecue, and WXZY will be broadcasting live. All the details are at WXZYradio.com. We thank the West Penn Power Sustainable Energy Fund, a 501c3 nonprofit organization, for their support. You're listening to Kane Wolves High School Football on 1017 XZY. Supported by great local businesses like these. Zook Motors, Route 6, just west of Kane, with new and pre-owned cars and trucks and service and parts department. Their inventory listings are online at zookmotors.net. Kane Elks Club, serving dinners on Fridays for members and their guests starting at 4 p.m. daily. Open bowling and league play available throughout the year. For information, call the Elks at 814-837-8812. Howard Hanna Professionals, representing buyers and sellers of homes, commercial properties, and acreage in the Kane area and and surrounding region. Online at howardhannaprofessionals.com. Field Street Boots, offering Carhartt and Timberline clothing along with hunting and fishing supplies. You can find them on Facebook or 18 Field Street in Kane. D'Angelo Custom Built Manufacturing, proud to stand behind Kane High Athletics and Academics. On the web at custombuiltmfg.com. Pepe's Bistro, 127 Fraley Street in Kane, with a food and drink menu including salads, subs, and wings, as well as a selection of beer. Their phone number is 814-837-8712. The Spoonwood Inn. They offer lodging and accommodations on Route 6 on the edge of Kane, just across from the Knox and Kane bike and walking trail. They can be reached at 814-561-1365. Flickerwood Wine Cellars. With wines made in-house as well as a gift shop and cocktail lounge offering a menu of entrees. They're on Flickerwood Road in Kane. Haberberger Disposal. Providing careful removal of household or business trash for customers around the region. They can be reached at 814-558-4304 or online at haberbergerdisposal.com. W.E. Swanson Agency, offering plans for auto, homeowners, and business and commercial at 23 Fraley Street. On the web at weswanssonagency.com. Texas Hot Lunch and Four Sons Family Restaurant. Field Street in Kane, home of the Kane Texas Hot, and serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Yes. 814-837-8122. Kane Lumber and Fuel, True Value Hardware. Located at 250 Hemlock Avenue. Serving the Kane area for over 85 years with remodeling and building supplies, tools, and paints. Cook's Home Furniture, located at 27 Fraley Street, serving you furniture styles and designs for all the rooms in your house. Cook'sHomeFurniture.com. WXCY LP Kane. A place to feel connected, a part of our local community, with info, insight, and great news. 1017 XZY. Someone really should make a movie of Mamma Mia, but whatever they do, whatever they do, they better not let Pierce Brosnan sing. I just can't handle that. Parson Peter P. Perkins, Fanny Farkle, Peter Fanny, Fanny Peter, Mark and Sparkle, Farkle, Peter P., Peter P., Simon and Garfarkle. I'm Mike Walker, and Saving the 70s is a show where we play lots of old stuff because new music's expensive and we're on a budget. But I hope you'll listen Saturdays at noon, right here on 1017 XZY. Minute. Hey, this is Brianna Blankenship, and you're listening to Kane Wolves Football, only on 1017 XZY. The following is made possible by Dad. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. <laughs> the Dad Joke. Corny, groan-worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. Why do you have to be careful when it's raining cats and dogs? 
It's because you might step in a poodle. <laughs> and kids that spend more time with their dads grow up to be smarter, more successful. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. We'll take it. <laughs> and with any luck, funnier adults. Why didn't the skeleton go to the dance? Because he didn't have any body to go with. Dad jokes rule. So take a moment to make a moment and give your kid a laugh. <laughs> it's as easy as going to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. <laughs> That's really funny. So we're back here at Paul R. Miller Stadium where your Cane Wolves are down 19 to nothing to Red Bank Valley Bulldogs. And we're going to bring you, since it's senior night, uh, the Cane Marching Band's uh, full halftime show here uninterrupted. Uh, and then we'll get to our Friends of the Wolf Pack, and there will be a special uh, recognition of the Tornado football players right after that. So hopefully we'll get the stadium announcer on and be able to hear that for you as well. So lots of things going on here at halftime at Paul R. Miller Stadium as the band takes the field, and we're going to cut to that and uh, get them mic'd up here. If I can figure out how to turn the mic back on again. There we go, now I think I do hear them. So here, Kane High Marching Band. Well, they're not playing yet, so uh, once they start playing, hopefully everybody will be able to hear them. They are arced up for our radio listeners, and they should be starting very shortly. First tune there by the marching band, the second one coming up.
And that is the Kane High Marching Band. Uh, so great job tonight. Congratulations to all of our seniors there in the band. Uh, they're next to last ha uh, home performance. They will have another one here against Bradford at the end of the season, but uh, they their lips may be frozen to their instruments by then uh, with, with Kane weather. So we now have next coming, I believe, is the uh, tornado introductions. But I'm going to try to start the Friends of the Wolf Pack here while that's going on. So if the guys are listening inside there, uh, once Mr. Weimer, the stadium announcer, is ready to go, make sure you plug his mic in so I can catch him. But we'd like to thank our Friends of the Wolf Pack. Maybe we're going to get that right now. The Kane Tornado Flag Football Team, the Kane Tornado Pee Wees, and also the Kane Tornado Pony League. First up, the Kane Tornado Flag Football Team, Trey Sanderson. Elliot Mentier, Benson Perrette, Rhett Wilbur, Theo Roberts, Carter Lindemuth, Kaysen McGue, Elliot Ferranto, Maddox Roth, Judd Johnston, Carson Haight, Henry Shimp, Jackson Carlson, Andrew Claybaugh, Harvey Moore, Hendricks Caldwell, Carter Compton, Nolan McCormick, Nathan Regal, Jason Rudolph, and Cole Artman. And the coaches for the team, Zach Fuller and Jake Silvis. Those are the Kane Tornado flag football team players. Next up, we have the Kane Tornado Pee Wee football team. Pee Wees will play Port Allegheny Gators tomorrow, Saturday, October 8th at 11 o'clock at the Kane Middle School Field. If the Tornadoes win, they will go on to the championship game October 15th. Good luck, Pee Wees. Number 14, Braden Avenelli. Number one, Giovanni Gonzalez. Number 20, Ben Goodnow. Number two, Jackson Harvey. Number 85, Nolan Korn. Number 56, Connor Avenelli. Number 10, Anthony Davis. Number 57, Noah Gadley. Number 65, Cody Gatewood. Number 87, Grant Gailey. Number 62, Aiden Hadfield. Number 12, Jillian Horton. Number 60, Jackson Hewlings. Number three, Aaron Long. Number 32, Brady Rook. Number 52, Kane Weidenhoff. Number 47, Maddox Zandy. Number 11, Logan DeVault. Number 83, Brock Hausler. Number 49, Blake Lindemuth. Number 22, Mason Myers. Number seven, John Nelson. Number 23, Chase Olson. Number six, Tyler Randon. And number 13, Hoyt Woodward. Coaches for the Pee Wee team, Jesse Olson, Nate Myers, BJ McHugh, Scott Gibson, and Rob Zelensnik. And 2022 Kane Tornado Pony roster. Coached by Jesse Olson, Derek Smith, Jim Hillman, Adam Bundy, Todd Silvies, and Ryan Avenelli. Number nine, Brock Smith. Number 17, Charlie Swanson. Number 19, Kellen Gibson. Number 21, Landon Chapman. Number 24, Connor McGue. Number 25, Conrad Yoder. 
Number 26, Trey Sunderkoffer. Number 27, Isaac Markey. Number 28, Ben Olsen. Number 29, Silas Hollebecky. Number 30, Ben McCormick. Number 31, Levi Gregory. Number 34, Braylon Mayberry. Number 35, Evan Regal. Number 41, Landon Haight. Number 42, Bentley Fuller. Number 43, Sam Wilson. Number 44, Noah Tarr. Number 45, Will Silfies. Number 48, Cole Smith. Number 50, Aiden Gillespie. Number 71, Eric Gadley. Number 76, Robbie Close. Number 77, Ryan Paul. Number 79, Jace Johnston. Number 80, Gage Polito. And number 90, Connor Taylor. Put your hands together. All these athletes, future Cane Wolves, participating in the Cane Tornado football program. And with that, guys, you can unplug the stadium mic, and we'll get right here to the Friends of the Wolf Pack. So we'd like to thank our friends of the Wolf Pack. I'm going to try to get some light here so I can see them all. We'd like to thank Joe and Shalice Gentile, along with the fireworks crew, Tyler and Katie Smith and family. And speaking of fireworks, there's some fireworks there for our tornadoes. That fireworks crew is always on, and I'm not able to get that camera view for the uh, viewers out there. My other cameraman has had some other things he's had to do. Uh, we got Mary Rotar, Molly Smith, and Ray Rockwell, Tom Jones, Dick and Joyce Graville, Pastor Calvin and Gail Cook, Kane United Methodist Church, East Kane United Methodist Church, Basil and Francine Imbrogno, Jim and Kathy Graville, Matt Gailey, Brittany and Tyler Bizak, David Korn, Jane Bostjancic, Pam Wright, Joshua King and Nicole Olowinski, the Barner family, Jodell, Michelle, Jason, and Kurt Barner, Elena and Colin Strom, in loving memory of Jack and Judy Barner and Judy Newfer. Bruce and Joanne Leonard, Tom and Carol Nicholas, Rita Graville, Reese Old Shop, Stephen Marcy Bezak, Eva and little brother Hayes Bezak, Tony and Jackie Cicchetti, Mike and Aaron Brinkley, Stephen Swanson, in memory of Nada Brinkley from Michelle, Ryan, and Caleb Stanley, Eli and Bria Hefferly, Rod Smith, Charlie and Paula Amuso, Peter Amuso, David and Laura Galvin, Hannah and Chandler, Penn and Baby Cyprism. Claire Galvin, Peter Galvin, Mark Gwinney, Joan Walker, Jacob Walker, Thomas Walker, in memory of Travis Walker, Jack and Jill Walker, Dennis and Jerry Lee Galvin, Cyrus, Lexi, Diesel, and Eric Novosel, Colton Johnson and Barbie Johnson, Vicki and Dave Thompson, Phil and Donna Ligenfelder, James Ligenfelder, 2014 Wolves alum, Craig and Debbie Wenzel, Jack and Linda Hedlin, Bob and Tina Rumsick, Bobby Rumsick, Ruth Heater, Don and Sue Stitt, Kim and Bill Cicchetti, Mel and Sandy Brinkley, Parker and Jody Brinkley, Jeremy and Joe Beth Brinkley, Keith Regal, Kathy Roston, Casey Jones, Tammy Swanson, Art and Bonnie Johnson, Rick Zampona, Mark Brinkley, Sharon and Gunnar Moore, Jackie and Lowell Watts, Richard Smith, Sharon Zampona, Lisa and Tim Weil, Joanne and Steve Perry, Patty Buell in memory of Richard Buell, Barb and Jim Kimbrough, Joe and Judy Kleiber, Julie Chittister, Paul and Lisa Kibbe, Aaron Lundeen, Todd and Sandy Haight, Debbie Lenaway, David Lenaway, Katie Capello, and John and Lori Forker. Your $10 gift is tax deductible and can be dropped off at the Radio Shack and Photo and Sound Shop in Uptown, Uptown Kane or go to wxzyradio.com and click on the PayPal link uh, on that page. Your donation is appreciated. It helps keep the lights on, keeps the studio going, keeps everything happening. And uh, one special note, Resold Shop, uh, they gave us a very generous donation this year. We'd like to thank them. They're an outreach ministry of the Kane First United Methodist Church, selling new and gently used clothing, furniture, appliances, and home goods. The proceeds benefit different charities in the Kane community, and they can be found at 43 North Fairley Street. And, guys, that was a lot of friends, and we truly thank them. 
That was a heck of a lot of friends, and you're right. We really do truly thank them, and that just cut, keeps on growing every, every week. week. That's just amazing. Every week. And how about the, the halftime show there with the, the little football kids coming out there, reading their names, and, and that, there yeah. was a lot of kids running around out there. There's a lot of kids there. I believe the middle school cheerleaders or the tornado cheerleaders were down there the first half of the game with our, our varsity cheerleaders, so that was fun to see as well. Uh, just, just everybody getting involved here, you know. And I think, I think Bruce says this all the time, so I'll say it for him. If you can't find something to do in in Kane now, uh, just look a little harder. Yeah, you're right. You know, just I, look a little harder. You'll find something to do. And how about the fireworks out there oh, for them little fireworks kids? Fireworks crew. Boy, did they run down there to, to look at that when that when they started sure uh, did. shooting them off. So yeah, what a great night here. And uh, hey, I tell you what, the Kane Wolves playing a pretty darn good first half against this Red Bank team. Uh, state cha- uh, going to the state championship game last year undefeated this year and i'll tell you what kane gave them everything that they could handle the first half they sure did not i've got some halftime and third quarter scores here so i can run down through the district nine area central clarion 33 monotaw zero in the third tyrone 21 clearfield 14 in the third Caldersport 12 auto eight at the half uh mishannon valley and 35, Curransville 0 at the half. St. Mary's 27, Dubois 20 in the third. ECC 25, Bucktail 16 in the third. Carn City 9 and Punxsy 0 at the half. That's a wow, slugfest over is. there. Uh, Port Allegheny 22, Union AC Valley 6. They got 6 on the board down there. Uh, Ridgeway 28, Smithport 0 at the half. Brookville 28, Bradford 0 at the half. Brockway 13, Keystone 7 in the third. And Cameron County 45, Sheffield 0. Yeah. And there we go. Well, good job there, Chris. Very good. And, Zach, what what do you think about that first half, what what took place? and uh, Wolf, Wolves defensively played lights out. <clears throat> they were put in a few tough spots, block punt at the beginning, got off the field. Another time they were put in a bad spot, short field, Red Bank scored, made two interceptions, got the ball down. Defensively, they need to change nothing except for whatever they have to alter because of what Red Bank changes. I think Red Bank found some momentum at the end of the half with the flat pass, flooding one area. I think you're going to see Orts touch the ball, and I think right in this opening drive you're going to see Red Bank come for the, the knockout punch. Yeah. And uh, offensively the Wolves just have to find something. And, uh, running's not working, passing's covered, and we'll see what Coach Smith – I mean, Coach Smith is the best that <coughs> on the – fly changes but we'll see what the wolves come up with and the, the ross kid there brandon ross really played a big part in that first half on the defensive side yeah. i mean we were trying to trying to run around him trying to run through him yeah i think we spent too much time in pregame offense 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 but when you look at the stats we talked about it but their defense is stellar as well and a good job out there, Chris. You guys, you and Jimmy out there, right? I mean, that's comes yep. in pretty clear. Some people were showing, sending good. me some tech stuff. And like, wow, I, was, I never was able to watch this. And it is really, really clear. You guys do a great job. We're, we're, we're definitely out here trying. So here we go for the halftime here. Has uh, Cole Walker ready to kick off for the Wolves? And he hits a little pooch kick taken by the up back around the 35 out to the 40. Going to be tackled right around the 41-yard line. And that's number f- 27, I think. Blaine Good grabbed him. Good, yep. And number 10, I don't really see a 10 there. It might Landon. be Slack, I think its name return, is there. Yeah. So the Red Bank will start their first drive at the own 41-yard line, leading by the score 19 nothing. So Wolves' defense has hung tough, though. <laughs> So this is one of the very few times Red Banks had a full field to go. So first down as Wagner out of the shotgun. And he hands this off to Byers. And Byers able to break the line of scrimmage. 45 across the 50 out into the Kane territory. Down inside the 45. And you're right, uh, uh, Chris or uh, Zach, about the quickness. Because it looked like Byers was going to be hit for... No gain and got 12. Got 12 yards into the Kane territory at the 40 at the Kane Wolves 45. So that was quick. First down and 10. Wagner again, shotgun, trip receivers split to the left for the Bulldogs. And Byers in the backfield. 
As the play clock down under five, a handoff to Wagner, and he's going to be hit. Or Byers is hit right at the line of scrimmage. Plants. That looks like Plants, Addison Plants, and he's coming off the field after that big hit, <laughs> holding his arm. But boy, he he uh, made a nice. He has a heck of a heck of a game, Plants kid. I'll tell you, he throws his body out there hard. Yeah, and the way he did that, I think maybe a stinger, but hope for the best here. He did not make it off the field, so the refs will uh, blow it dead here to tend to him and. And Isaiah Smith now up, looked like he was going to come onto the field, but now comes back off. So they'll do some shuffling, and it looks like uh, Eli will move the middle linebacker, and they'll find another end. Yeah, and Plants wasn't able to get off the field, so he's standing right at the... Right at the 50-yard line. Was there? Did we already do some scores? Oh, yep. yeah, Chris just did the scores right there. Yeah. Well, like I said, so the Wolves' defense, though, hanging tough there. I mean, they really haven't got anything easy. Red Bank hasn't today. I mean, even when they had the short fields after the block punts, they've had to, you know, really. Yeah, I mean, and, and Wagner, the, the passing leader here in the D9 or what. Yeah. Uh, he, he's had to. He's, Over 1,500 yards. Yeah, and he, he's touchdown. had to work for, for it tonight. And he's had to scramble. He's had through to throw the, through two picks. Had Got to, hit a few times. Had to throw <laughs> throw the ball away a few times because of the defense. I mean, if he tries to throw it in there, he might have been picked a couple and, more and, times. And the thing is, a lot of teams will look at this film and see what Kane did defensively to slow them down. We're not saying they shut him out but to slow him down. Yeah, it looks like Plants is going to be actually helped off the field. So, you know, there's two of your big guys, Zampona and Plants, both the uh, le senior leaders. And, you know, pretty hard to lose anybody, but when you lose two of your mainstay uh, players, that's, that makes it really, really tough. And... Plants, I think, leads the t oh, team yeah. in tackles. There's no doubt about that. And uh, from that linebacker spot, I mean, he's all over the field. So it's going to be a second down and 11 as back to pass. And that's going to be a little screen pass out here to the 40, down inside the 35, down to about the 32-yard line is Kale. It looks like Sharba out there on the tackle along with uh, – Dar also, I yeah. think, number Dar 10. Dar yep. cut back in there. So now they found what they wanted there, <laughs> running a little tunnel screens, getting some people into some space. So with 10.38 to go here, the Bulldogs up 19-0 on the march here inside the Cane Wolves 32-yard line. Wagner shotgun, and hands this off to Byers, no and way. Byers is going to be hit for no gain. Aaron Smith has looked like Byers tried to make a cut kind of slip, but Smith right there to – Put him down and no game. Going to be second and 10 for the Bulldogs. The ball spotted at the Cane Wolves 33 yard line. Yeah, he went to cut back there, but Smith did a good job. I think Smith would have probably had him anyway. So they go trip receivers out to the left. Looks like Orts, Minnick, and Kale split That's to the be left. On Kane, neutral zone infraction. Yep, you're right. Offsides against Kane. So instead of a second and ten, it's going to be a second and five. Not what you wanted there after you got a negative play. And it looks like Blaine Good out there, number 27 for the Wolves. Him and split. Paul have done an excellent job. Yep, yep, they have. Split way out on man on man. So Wagner back to pass in the pocket, looking downfield, has a man, and that's going to be caught out of bounds. That was for Kale, and yeah, that was a nice pass. And just let him a little yep. too far out of bounds. And guess what? Number Daniel 11, <laughs> Daniel Paul right stride there. Stride for stride. Yep, stride for stride. That's why he had to throw that to that off shoulder and took and on him that up. short side of the field, Steve, the most important thing there for Paul is to keep inside leverage keep pushing that route to the sideline and limit that that catch radius. Yeah, and that's he what did he excellent. did. That was a nice job. So third down, Wagner rolls to the left, and he has a man out there, Minnick, <laughs> and Minnick going to take it down inside close to about the 10-yard line. Hit out there by Dane Anderson, but not until Minnick takes this all the way down 
See inside the 10, gonna mark it right at the 10. So first and goal from the 10 yard line for the Bulldogs. With 9.20 to go here, third quarter, and the Bulldogs up 19 to nothing. Wagner out of the shotgun with Byers into the backfield. Trip receivers to the right, and they hand this off to Byers, and that's going to be a touchdown as he goes unscathed. And that's going to put up six more for the Bulldogs and put the score to 25 to nothing with 9.23 here to go into the third quarter. So, yeah, that was uh, easy that time. Yeah, again, you know, like after Plants Kid gets hurt, your big senior leaders, and then that just kind of a little bit of a momentum change. And so on for the extra point is Klaus. Snap, low snap, and that's blocked right at the line of scrimmage Sharba. there by Kane Sharba comes through. Not until, though, the Red Do Bulldogs put up their touchdown on their first drive at, after the halftime. Yeah, so they came out, just a few quick plays, got the big third down play to Minnick down, down the sideline, got to the 10, and then they just ran it with Byers right up the middle and scored, so 25 nothing there. And like you said, the Wolves kind of offense just, just trying to find something here. I mean, the, earlier tonight, I mean, we had some pretty bad field position pretty much for the most yeah. part we really have. Uh, the few times that we did have it out there, we, I mean, we had the one drive early. And, uh, yeah, pretty tough. Mark Szymanski. So Mark Szymanski on the 300 Club winner, yeah. third quarter. And they do five of them, right? They do five drawings. I think it's just four, four because of the number of home games oh, that's right. this year. Yeah, okay. So it looks like Klaus going to kick off, and he hits a boomer down to Sammy West about at the 15, and West takes it to 20, tries to get it outside. Hit right around the 25, spins and down around about the 26-yard line, and here comes Huge a flag. flag. Yeah. yeah, I think we might have 15 on Red Bank. He threw it from 30 yards from the play. And I think you're, gonna see, you're starting to see it get a little chippy, so I think you're going to see the refs try to rein it back in. They've pretty much been flagless tonight, except for the obvious holdings and an offsides. You know, they've let them play. Yeah, that's been a pretty good momentum, you know, because when you start to see a lot of yellow, it, it starts slows, and slows everything down. And we're not down. here to watch them. That's what I always tell them. <coughs> yep. So you're right. Is that, oh, there they go. They'll offset, offset them. That's smart. Smart play. Sets the tone for the refs. Yep. Offset them. Let them know we're watching next time. So the Wolves will start their drive at their Thone 32-yard line. And as I said, they've been trying to, trying to find a little bit of offense here and just been pretty tough sledding. And now it's going to be at the 25-yard line. So at the 25-yard line, the Wolves take over here with 9.17 remaining and down by 25 to nothing. As Zook out of the shotgun it is. Comes up under center, and he hands this off to West, and West is going to be hit right at the line of scrimmage. It looks like Ross again, also Bish, number 13 on the tackle, but uh, no gain. Going to be a second down, and, boy, the referees are Let both of, teams, yeah. and I think both coaches know right now. Looks These like guys have played tough. I don't know really what was this upsetting. You can make a block downfield. So it looks like Eli now at the fullback spot for Plants and West at the tailback spot for Zampona. Better get a playoff. Three. Yeah, the reset play, the play yeah. block. There we go. So second and 10 here at the 25-yard line of the Wolves. Again, down by 25 nothing. 8-17 remaining here, third quarter. Uh, Looks like the Wolves going to go to two wide receivers split out here to the left. It's Dar along with Anderson. And in the backfield is West with Luke Eli. 
And now out of the shotgun, and now, now the play delay. clock might have ran out. So delay a game against the Wolves, so bring up a second and 15 for the Wolves. Back inside the 20. So now the 25 play clock reset. Now it starts. And again, Zook shotgun formation. Two wide receivers split to the left. Zook rolling left, going to throw, and that ball is going to be batted down. And intercepted, and intercepted by Ross. What a by, play. By Ross. Yeah, numbers. 51. I don't know. Number 12, I think it was. Mason Klaus got a hand up. And. Ross. Ross right there to pick it off. All right. Athletic play by Ross there. So the Wolves or the Red Bank Valley is going to take over at the Kane Wolves 17. So not only is their offense uh, flying for the for the Bulldogs now, but uh, a couple of turnovers inside the red zone on this high-powered offense makes it really tough for the Kane Wolves defense. Wagner again out of the shotgun with Byers Soul back, four receivers to the left, two to the right. Wagner back to pass, throws a quick slant down the middle to Klaus. And Klaus is going to be tackled inside the five, down around the four-yard line. But just that quick hitter slant, wide open. and uh, Pitch and a catch. Looks like Eli out there on the tackle finally, but not until they take it inside the five. Going to be at the four-yard line, first and goal for... The Bulldogs from Red Bank Valley is uh, Wagner again, shotgun, Byers into the backfield. And they're going to pitch this to Minnick, and Minnick's going to take it off that left edge, and that's going to be a, looks like a touchdown for and Minnick, but here comes some flags, late flags, and that's I probably. I thought momentum carried that tackle, but they're going to call it tight because they see it getting out of hand. It's going to be a... And they're yeah. going to talk it over out there, right, these refs. But it's a touchdown, but we're going to see what, what the personal foul against the Wolves. So it's after the touchdown, but yeah. So now you give Red Bank this high-powered offense uh, some momentum, some turnovers into the red zone, and now it's just starting to, to snowball a little bit for the Wolves. As I said, that first half, they played tough. It was, what, 19 nothing at the end of the first half, and which very, very much could have been, it was, you know, 13 nothing. Yeah. I mean, it really. Could have been seven in reality. Yeah. You take away a block punt. So now it looks like they're going to go for the two-point conversion as Wagner. <clears throat> Again, out of shotgun, five receivers split to the left. Wagner going to roll to the right, and he's just going to take this one in on his own. So there it is for the two-point conversion, and that puts him up. By a score of, what, 35 to nothing. Yep. Well, 33. 33 to nothing. With seven minutes to go here, third quarter. <clears throat> yeah, the Wolves without two of their senior leaders, Zampona and Plants. Both, uh, you know, kids. This, this has been a hard physical, hard match. And Zampona, that was the first quarter he went out about halfway through and then yeah. plants the very opening drive of the third quarter. Made a big play. Made a big play in the shoulder. Body yep. injury or and then, uh, so here we go. And some scores around the, the league, yep. anybody? I'm updating it right now. Okay. See if it refreshes here. Oh, no. Because there were some pretty tough, button, of course pretty, pretty close games there. There were. I can't get mine to refresh, so it's all you. So Central Clarion 33, Monata nothing. Uh, let's see here. Nothing really has changed since the last time I said anything. Uh, it's all still the same scores. Huh. So Ridgeway 28 now, Smithport 0, Brookville 28, Bradford 0, Brockway 13, Keystone 7. Well, that's a tight one there too, huh? Brockway and Keystone. Yep, nothing's and up that's to, where we go next Brookville week 35. down to Keystone, right? That's where we go travel yep. to Keystone. Knox. Yep. <laughs> Knox, PA. Been a while since we've played Keystone. And, and same way with, with this Red Bank Valley. Since 2015, we got beat 15 to nothing. Well, we got beat. It was a playoff game. We got beat by the refs 15 to nothing. That was one of the worst refereed games. 
down I there. Th yeah, I hope those refs are not refing anymore. That's that. that I <laughs> have to that? agree with that. I do do agree with that. But Josh you know, Kibbe and Sean Jordan seniors on that team. It, it, it's it's tough though, you know. Yeah. And I, I recall the field being a mess because there was like a flood down there, like the week yeah, the, before. Yeah, the field was the field was a mess. There was some other stuff going on with with the, the footballs, the fans, all kinds of it different was, things. It's and a ruckus. It's a great environment. Yeah. If you're for Red Bank, yeah. so I mean, kudos to them, home field advantage. But I just remember yeah. it being a total mess, and remember, and I pretty much left in the fourth because it was getting hostile. Yeah, it was getting pretty hostile there, but you know, it all straightened itself out, and sure does. Yeah. Hey, how about that kick by Klaus? Great. That went all the way into the end zone, and the Wolves will take over at their own 20. Yeah, they took the 15-yard penalty. and Yeah, so that kicked it out of the end zone. So here we go. And they're going to hand this one off to Sam West on that end around, and West going to be hit right at the 25, 26-yard line. And that is number one on the tackle, and that is uh, Ortz on the tackle. But a pickup of a nice uh, about six yards for the Wolves West as that's going to be a second and four with seven minutes to go here into the third quarter, and the Wolves down by 33 nothing. So shotgun formation it is for Zook with West and Eli in the backfield for the Wolves. And a handoff to West right up the middle. And he breaks a tackle but not able to spin. Broke the first tackle by Ross but was able to not be able to break the one by Moran. And he uh, tackles him for no gain. Yeah, and the Wolves there, they just try a simple ISO play. And the penetration by Red Bank is there and just cleaned it up. So third and four for the Wolves at their own 26-yard line. Again, down by the score. 33 nothing with six and a half to go here into the third quarter. Now Anderson in motion from the right to left, and Zook throws out to Anderson intended out there for Dar, and that's going to be incomplete. Stops the clock with 6.24 to go, and uh, Wool's going to be forced to punt. And now you said Red Bank just coming back, you know, just they're just letting it all fly. Uh, you Put know, it out of sight. Yeah, I mean, knowing that you're going to pass and just kind of bringing the floodgates and not even really worried about the run game. So Eli going to punt from inside his 15. Orts and Kale back oh. deep. And, boy, does Eli hit a boomer. Dead. And that's a dead ball, ball. He hit a boomer. Offsides Red Bank. It might be a first down for Kane. <coughs> yeah, it's going to be really close. <laughs> Fourth and, yeah, you're right. Going to be a first down for the Wolves. At uh, their own 30-yard line with 6.18 to go here, third quarter. So now, now Anderson split out to the right with Dar. And it taking some time to get the plays off here, you know. And Sam West off that right side. And, boy, Sam West gets across the 35, out to about the 36. And there again is Ross. But I'll tell you what, Sam West put the head down. and he, He's moving he, through Yeah, that and hole. he knocked Ross backwards for about three yards. So, yep. nice pickup of seven. And the Wolves' adjustment here, if you notice, they're running an off-balance line. So, they had a lineman to the right side. Move the tight end here so the tight end's dead. He can't run a route or anything, but they're yep. going to run power right, so they must see something in that defense they like. So, again, split two to the right. And, again, West with the ball, same play. And West uh, across the 40. That uh, looks like really close to a first down. Ross again. And a Ross again. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> and that is a first down for the Wolves. So, hey, two two runs there off that right side. As you said, they they stacked the line over there, right? And, uh, yeah, trying to just run it. I think the real point of it is to get two blockers on Ross. You know what I mean? And they're allowing to get to the second level finally. Ross still may be making the play, but it's four yards down the field rather than four in the back field. So shotgun for Zook. Again, West on that same play, and he's going to be stood up now. 
from Ross again <laughs> right there. Instead of uh, two, maybe needed about three or four guys to block him right there. Man, yeah. I'll tell you, that kid is playing a heck of a game. So I'm sure the adjustment was made. So second and 10, no game. Now under five minutes to go here into the third quarter. The Wolves down 33 nothing. West with the ball going to be stacked right at the line of scrimmage. Again, trying to run that right side. And it looks like number 13, 13 out there for the tackle, Bish, Cole Bish. And number 81 was in on that, too. So that's going to actually Schick. a loss of a yard. Third and 11 for the Wolves. And just letting some clock run here. Now it looks like West and Dar are going to split way out here into the left. Side Dane Anderson split to the right. Play clock down under 10. And now it's under 5. And they're not going to get this one off again, I don't think. Nope. So timeout. Yeah, just having a hard time tonight getting the plays in and out. And that, that was kind of a problem earlier, you know, and then they kind of got – that's all cleaned up. up, and then now, but you know what? Like I said, maybe it was Zampona out of the game, being out that, that you know what I mean? Because one of your main ball carriers I, that, that might have something to do with it. It really. <sighs> Just some things about uh, interesting stats about the refs that we were talking about them a little earlier, that uh, the, the whole area is in dire, dire yes. need of referees. Uh you know, the, if every ref over 55 decided they weren't going to do it, uh, there would be 76 guys in the area retiring. Yeah, Just absolutely. found that information out. Yeah, so. Dan Boyer, I know him. He's, yeah. He mentions it, even basketball, soccer, all sports. I mean, it's a nationwide issue as yeah. well. Why is that? We, we, we don't know, but I just, just something there. If you're listening to this game and you're interested in refing, uh, already just this year, uh, every week, Teams are putting a hat, and your game one one game gets moved to Thursday or Saturday. Yep, uh, yeah, that's and that's I see crazy. that a lot in District yep. Ten too. Watching and Gary that's news at home. a good potential that that's going to happen next, next year as a weekly thing, not just a once in once in a while. It's probably yep. going to be a weekly thing where there's just not a refs to go around. So your Friday night game could be Thursday night or Saturday night. Yeah, wow. and yeah, it's it's a big issue, and especially in some other districts. Yep. It's picked off. Ortz's is second pick, and that's going to be a hold. Looks like uh, Zook down back in the backfield. And also it looked like there might have been a hold against the Wolves. So the interception will probably count. Yep, so it will be Red Bank Valley ball after the turnover, the interception. But Zook still down on the ground. I got a final, Chris, too, from a guy who's down at Port. Port beats Union 42-14 final. Union AC, huh? Yeah, they Port put one on them. And that was down at, at, Union, at Union AC. Wow. Yep. Because yep. if I believe, they usually played some games at AC Valley, but they haven't been because the field didn't pass. Yeah, yeah we were yeah. down there. And, and they uh, definitely said something was wrong with their field, didn't they, Steve? Yeah. yeah they yeah. haven't had a football team. And, and they, they were one of the first very mergers. And yeah. there you are, like last week I said, against Port, you got, they put up a heck of a job here, right? I mean, you really did first first half. Yeah. What's yeah. that? They got that Moses kid. Did, did he yeah. have a big game last no. week up here? Plants no. pretty much isolated him. Evans, the quarterback, ran for three. Really? Yep. Um. Got an update here. They just updated. Auto Eldred 26, Scouter Sport 18. Final, St. Mary's 34, Dubois 27. Fourth quarter, Elk County Catholic up 33 24. <coughs> Third quarter, Carn City 15, Punxsutawney 13. They're really making it a game there, aren't they? Yes, they are. Oh, wow. It's a slobber knocker. <laughs> there uh, you go. You got Ridgeway. 28 nothing still to have. Nothing's been updated there. Brookville, 35 nothing over Bradford. Keystone Brockway, 14-13. Definitely some playoff implications in that game. And Cameron County up in the third, 52-0 over Sheffield. And just kind of been keeping an eye on Eisenhower at 7-0. and 
not seeing their game here under the D10. Uh, Eisenhower is going to – they won 35-18 over Segertown. Wow. So it will be something to watch going forward. They've moved to 8-0. And – They've got a team, don't they? A couple years in a row now they've yeah. had a team, and looks like Warren is also going to win over Mercyhurst Prep 12-6. to six. Hmm. And Warren's field's been uh, – they haven't even been right playing on their own field. They've ran been, into issues. Yeah. I've been following it. They ran into some getting equipment for the field. They've been playing at Youngsville. And Zook able to come off the field finally as that he laid out there for quite a while. And he's standing here, so that's a good thing to see. So Wagner on a shotgun, and they hand this off to Minnick. Minnick down the left side, 45-50, crowd of 40. Going to take it down to the 20-10. And touchdown, Tate Minnick, as we said. Fast. Quick. And, uh, you know, you, you tie him in all game, and then all of a sudden, bango, there he takes a 60-yarder. And uh, the Kane Wolves. Just not able to, to stop this high-powered offense with 3.43 to go here into the third quarter, and that put up 39 now for Red Bank Valley. So I think that will also put on the mercy roll here. Yeah. Yep. And you haven't seen that in Kane up in much. Kane much against us. You know what I mean? That's That's been a definite that you haven't seen that. So the Red Bank ready to go for the two-point conversion. And Wagner out of the shotgun it is, and he's going to roll right, and he's under some pressure, throws, and that's going to be he's no good. So the two-point conversion fails, and it puts up Red Bank Valley 39 to Kane Wolves nothing with 3.40 to go here, third quarter, in a hard-hitting game. And I said the three, three Kane Wolves, I mean, out of the game so far tonight, Zampona and Plants. Your two seniors, and now you lose your quarterback, uh, Kyle Zook, and I'm not even sure now who will maybe maybe the Bajakis. I'm not sure who. I'm not, can, I'm not real we'll sure. We'll find out here, but uh, yeah. And you hate to see these injuries. To you know, you really do. You hate to see any kid get injured, but uh, I don't need to see Zampona down on the sidelines or Plants. Pray, you know? He's good. Yeah, so, Plants is right here. Oh, he is. You see him? Yeah, he's on the bench right here. Okay. But Zampona, I don't I even see him down yet. Hopefully everything's him. okay, you know. So Klaus going to kick off. West and Dane Anderson back for the Wolves again at the 10-yard line. And the kick from Klaus. Going to be... Hits at the 15, and they better pick it up, and they do. West picks it up, and he takes it maybe out to the 20. Tackled there by number 17, Ty Hetrick. Hetrick, Ty Hetrick, yep, on the tackle. So the Wolves, let's see who comes in out there at quarterback spot for the Wolves. Yeah, looks like it is going to be Zook. Oh, yeah, coming yep. back out. Well, that's a good sight to see. Yep. Might have been just that stinger there, yeah. you know. When knocked out of him, he's exposed, throwing that ball and got hit. <coughs> yep, you're right. Zook coming back out, so good to see. Athletic trainer Samantha Delcamp has been busy tonight. Yeah, she has been, huh? That's a, that's the that's the one job where we want to see not busy. Yeah, but you're we do right. thank yep. her for all the services she does because she's a uh, there for these athletes both on the field at games and uh, for training the training room and rehab and all that good stuff. So the game clock there is uh, kaput. Oh, the, pl the, the play, play clock. clock. The play clock is look, looks like it's uh, not working right. So run it on the field. <laughs> Maybe. How's that uh, temperature out there, Chris? You know what? I'm glad I came in uh, when I had a spare 10 seconds to grab my car heart. <laughs> well, I'm getting, sweating. Really? Yeah, you know, uh, you, know, you guys are probably Call warm. Uh, yeah, it's hot in here. Uh, that's nice. So Zook out of shotgun. He hands this off to West and West across the 20 out to about the 22-yard line. And Ross again on that tackle. 
Man, he's either left side or right side. So it doesn't matter. He goes strong it? side, yeah. Gee. He's going whatever offset the fullback is. He'll rotate. He's usually probably – he'll come wide side because of his speed and length. So, if they run something that side, he can stretch it. He's a monster. Play clock, clock is back and operational. There we go. So, second and eight after the pickup of two. Again, West with the ball. Has this little crease. The 30, the 35. Close to the 40, ran out of bounds out there as West by Tate Minnick. And that's that speed that the Sammy West, 10th oh, yeah. grader, 10th grader too. And I, you know, I, sneaky fast. Sneaky fast, and I know that kid works out. I, I, yeah. I, I've seen him up close, and he, he has some physique to him. So yeah, and he, uh, only going to get stronger. Like I said, sneaky fast, and he has good vision. So first down for the Wolves out close to the 40-yard line. You're going to say at the 38 with 2:11 here remaining third quarter, down 39 to nothing. West again with the ball left side across the 40, 45 close to midfield, tackled out there by number five Minnick and also Orts on the tackle. 72 Garrett Schaefer in there as well. And a pickup of. Close to nine, so it'll be a second in the yard for the Wolves. As Eli and West into the backfield for the Wolves. Number 50, Adams for Red Banks had a quiet but a good game at that linebacker spot. Minute 30 to go, third quarter. Has shotgun for Zook, and again, West with the ball, left side. Big push, oh, breaking tackles, and West is going to take this one to the house, down to the 20, 15, 10, God, he five. squirt out of there. And Sammy West, I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a second effort from West. And I, you know what, though? That line play on that drive, yep. they said, you know what, we are put, and it did. They they pushed, they pushed, they pushed, and then West finally was able Squirted to come one. out of that pile and break a big touchdown for the they so didn't see him almost. sophomore, right? Yeah, That's sophomore. Greater, you know? Yep, he squirted it out on that one, and I didn't. I think everyone thought he was down, and I think he kind of thought he did too, and he was upright, and down the sideline he went. Good, good play by the Wolves and a good run by West. So now Cole Walker on for the extra point as uh, 39 to six in favor of Red Bank. And it looks like the hold good and the kick is no good. Kick game for both tonight have been a little off and it, the footing for the kickers looks rough. A little slippery out there maybe. So the wool, hey, Nice run there by Sammy West, a 10th grader, and said some big push by that offensive line from the Wolves. Well, that was a nice yeah. drive. That started, what, at the third? Well, that was a 70-yard yeah. drive. So, you know, kudos for the Wolves not quitting. Because you know what? You can let down at that at this at any level. And yeah. I, I just liked how they stayed into that and, you know, made a big, made made a big made a, you know, made it happen for them. Brookville 41, Bradford 0, somewhere in the fourth. Ridgeway still 28, Smithport nothing in the half, and that just hasn't been updated yet. Final, I don't know if you, did you get this final? St. Mary's 34, Dubois 27. Wow, that was a close game. I think game. it went final there yeah. in that injury yeah. timeout. <laughs> that was a real close game, 34-27. Yeah, St. Mary's bounced back after being upset by Brookville last yeah. week. Yeah. And uh, another uh, uh -huh. former... North, uh, Otto Elder 26, Cowdy uh, 18. Another still tight in the fourth. game, that's yeah. still in the fourth, so that's still. How about Brockway Keystone? Brockway Keystone is still 21-14 in the fourth, Brockway. Oh, okay. Still a one-score one game there. All so. important games now with the playoffs on the horizon for playoff contenders. So Walker going to kick off here for the Wolves after the big run by Sam West. And it's a line driver taken by the up back at the 30. Going to be at the 35 across the 40, 45, close to midfield. Nice run there by the Caden up back. Caden Nicewanger. What was 10. it? Yep. Caden Nicewanger. Caden Nicewanger. And it looked like number 14 for the Wolves, and that's uh, Willman, Caden Willman on the tackle. 
as uh, Red Bank will start their drive right at midfield. Now nah, they're going to start seeing some new faces come in for Red Bank. Uh huh. Which is an important time for them, especially up, you know, going to be in the playoffs, injuries, flu season. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Depth is huge. Yeah, depth is huge. And then, like, when you're winning like that, you're winning a lot of these games, you're able to play a experience. lot of the underclassmen and get them some experience. And, and that does go a long, long way for the program. So Wagner, shotgun formation it is, and he's going to hand this one off to Byers, and Byers breaks the tackle down at the 40, down inside the 30-yard line, brought down by Eli, but a big 20-yard scamper by the back Byers. And that's going to be a first down, under 30 seconds remaining here into the third quarter. And they might just let this one run out, which they can. And I think that is. They're going to let it run out. So that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. We'll take it back to Joe in the station and uh, return for the fourth quarter. Seven XCY thanks the following sponsors for their support of our broadcast. Texas Hot Lunch and Four Sons Family Restaurant. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Zook Motors, Route 6 west of King. New and pre-owned cars and trucks. W.E. Swanson Agency, providing insurance for Kane and all of Pennsylvania. Kane Elks Club, with league and open bowling and dinners for members and their guests starting at four daily. D'Angelo Custom Built Manufacturing, maker of heavy duty records. Field Street Boots, offering Kane sports apparel, gear and accessories. Haberberger Disposal, waste collection services for residential or commercial. Pepe's Bistro, 127 Fraley Street, open daily for lunch and dinner. Cook's Home Furniture, 27 Fraley Street in Kane. Online at cookshomefurniture.com. The Spoonwood Inn, with lodging and accommodations available on Route 6 at the edge of Kane. Flickerwood Wine Cellars, offering a variety of house-made wines and a cocktail lounge serving food whenever the winery is open. Kane Lumber and Fuel True Value Hardware, with lumber, tools, paints, and more at 250 Hemlock Avenue. And Howard Hanna Professionals at 30 Fraley Street. Listings can be found at howardhannaprofessionals.com. WXEYLP Kane. Okay, that brings us back to the Paul R. Miller Stadium at the Barry Morgan Memorial Press Box as the Wolves down 39 to 6. And it's uh, first down for Red Bank, and they hand this off to Byers right up the middle. Byers down inside the 20, a pickup of 11, brought down by Eli again for the Wolves, but a pickup of 11 for Byers, and that's another first down for the Red Bank Valley Bulldogs. Got some audio feedback in the background, I think, from the station, if they can hear us. <laughs> so <laughs> Wagner out of the shotgun again for the Bulldogs. Looks like Orts and Minnick split to the right. And a handoff here to Byers, and Byers is... Gonna be hit pretty hard at the, looks like Aaron Smith for Shemansky the Wolves and Shemansky too. number 24. And that's a hard hit out there. Maybe a pickup of about three. I tell you that Byers is fast. He is, yeah. He hits that hole fast. So pickup of three inside the Kane Wolves are gonna mark it at the 15. So a second down and eight. They're gonna call a pickup of two. Second and eight with now under ten and a half to go here. Kind of drawing some clock down as Wagner shotgun Byers. And they're going to hit this to Byers again. And Byers, Anderson, Dane Anderson picks him right at the line of scrimmage. A nice job there by Dane Anderson as they tried to do that little that counter game, trap right? play. Yeah, and uh, Anderson stays right in his lane. You know, he doesn't get sucked in. Is all the motion was going to the left, and they tried to bring Byers back to the right side, and Dane Anderson does a nice job, and no gain. So it's a third and eight. The ball at the Kane Wolves, 15. 
Now just 10 minutes to go here. The Wolves down 39 to six. I see Isaiah Smith now checks in as middle linebacker for the Wolves. And he was hurt right in preseason. Yeah, for and a couple broke, weeks. Yeah, hurt I think foot. he broke a bone in his foot. Byers with the ball left side, breaks a tackle down inside the five. Tackled there by Bajakis. Not until Byers is able to take it all the way down inside the five, mark it at the four yard line. First and goal for the Bulldogs at the Kane Wolves four yard line. And kind of surprised that, you know, well, at 39 to six, but I guess, you know, you let them play one this series and then I would think that they probably would bring in some of their underclassmen to get them experience, you know? Yeah. And that's what Kane was able to do here years past. I mean, that Alps. was, you know, that really does help build the program as Byers touchdown. with the carry right up the middle and that's gonna be a touchdown for Drew Byers. So Red Bank Valley adds on to the score, makes it 45 to six with 8.58 remaining here into the game. And now it's just kind of, you get wore down here. You can just see it happen, you know? Mentally. And yeah, physically. mentally, physically, three, you know, two years, seniors yeah. are hurt out of the game. And it just, it's just taking its toll right now on this uh, Kane Wolves team. And the extra point kick missed. And that was uh, straight up, straight up, straight down. Fly so ball. 45 to six in favor of the Bulldogs. See, my Mets aren't faring too good tonight, Steve, in game one of the uh, NL wild card against the... Is that a three-game series it now is. they made that this year yeah. instead of one? I watched an exciting one right before I came up here. The uh, Phillies put six up in the top of the ninth and beat the Cardinals 6-2. They were winning. Cardinals were winning 2 nothing, blew the save. And wow. <laughs> Here's the final, guys. Brockway 21, Keystone 20. Wow. Oh, Keystone must have went for two for the win. Yeah, right? went for the win. Well, that's what... Yeah, hey. uh, yeah. Ridgeway 42, Smithport 6. That's wow. the final. So Smithport getting a couple of W's in a row. Yep. And Ridgeway kind of coming around. Yeah. The last two they won last week and this week, right? Yep. Tyrone over Clearfield 21 to 14. Clearfield having a tough year. Yeah. They, they've usually been pretty good yep. uh, in the past. Their coach is a monster. Yeah. Uh, Moshannon Valley 41, Kerwinsville 14. ECC 33, Bucktail 24. Uh, Bucktail yeah. come back there. Yeah, and that Kerwinsville game is important because they still play District 9 playoffs. They do, yeah. So last year they played Smithport. Watch that game. So the kickoff, and that's going to hit at the 10 and bounce into the end zone. Thank so goodness. it's going to be a touchback, <laughs> yeah. Thank God that didn't stop at the 1, but that's going to be a touchback. So the Wolves will take over at their own 20, first and 10 with the uh, Nine minutes to go here into the game and down by 45 to six. I wish this score would update. Carn City 15, Punxsy 13, still shown in the third, but I can't <coughs> imagine that's still in the third. Yeah, I can't imagine they don't have somebody live there. Yeah. And that's it looks like the Wolves are right gonna put in some of the underclassmen here, I do believe, right? Yeah, looks like Red it, yeah. And their Red guys Bank in. too, so Zook. Already an underclassman will stay in the game at quarterback. And Sammy West also, you know. You know what? I think they didn't even have any JV games this year. No, a no, lot of didn't. places don't even have JV. Had them on the schedule, but they were canceled early in the season. Wow. You and know? I think that goes for a lot of schools. A lot of schools now. did, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, this wasn't just us. So Sam West on the carry. Oh. And West is going to be tackled right at the line. And that is number four, and I got Brock, Brock Moran. Moran? Yeah. yeah. Moran on the tackle. If any Red Bank people are listening, we try to get the pronunciations right. Yeah, Brock Moran on the tackle. Maybe a gain of a yard, second and nine for the Wolves. And Levi Wilson, number 22 for the Wolves, splits out to the left. And West and in the backfield along with, I'm not sure, number on that fullback there. I think it's Eli. Oh, it is, yep. As West, the ball carrier, and he's going to be tackled 
right again at the line of scrimmage. Big number 68, and that is, I don't see it on there, do you? Oh yeah, Carroll, Gabe Carroll. Big fella. Yeah, they got some big tonnage there. Oh. Third down and gonna call it eight for the Wolves. Seven minutes to go, the ball at their own 23 yard line. Penn State, bye week next week, or this tomorrow, so you'll be able to somewhat be peaceful. Not too many big games tomorrow. And then they go what, play Michigan? Yeah, that's gonna be a debacle. I can already feel it. Michigan is tough, whoa. A pitch to West, and West is gonna be tackled back into the backfield by Moran. As Moran makes two plays back to back, and that's gonna be a loss of about three. Is that just look like a little Fell bit of apart. a mistiming between uh, the quarterback Zook and it just kind of didn't get that pitch off real well, and that's going to be a punting per, uh, for the Wolves. <coughs> it looks like Ryan Rupp back for the. Is Eli going to stand back at his five yard line? And he hits one up in the air. It's going to be an end over ender. Rupp lets it hit. And now he picks it up at the th 45. Down at the 40, trying to take it to the outside. Aaron Smith gives chase and takes Rupp down around at the 25-yard line. But, boy, what a play by Rupp as that ball hits on the ground. Perfect. And he picks it up on the first bounce and takes it from the left sidelines all the way across the field onto the right sidelines. And Aaron Smith able to bring him down. But Rupp takes that for about 15 from the 40 down to the 25. Yep. So Shelly Williams, did you hear that out there, Shelly Chris? Shelly Williams, I heard Williams, I couldn't yeah, hear the first Shelly name. Shelly Williams, the 300 club winner, fourth quarter, so. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, and again, everybody that contributes, that plays that. Uh, Four people that, walking out tonight with 500 beans. Yep, and that helps out the whole, what is that, the, the sports boosters. Sports yeah. boosters, so yeah. it's a good job there. Yep. And with 5.40 to go, the Wolves down 45 to six, and there's a timeout on the field as uh, Red Bank will take over at the 25-yard line of the Wolves. And it looks like, just like I said, a lot of uh, underclassmen. Yeah. And, uh, and while, while we just got a lull here, uh, the WXZY radio station will be on uh, a live remote tomorrow at Six and Kane, the grand opening uh, tomorrow. Uh, festivities start about 9.30 and go to about 2. So if you're in town in Kane and come on out to Six and Kane, and if not, listen in on the radio all day long as we'll be doing uh, live broadcasts there all day. Well, wow, that will be pretty Grand cool, opening right? of yeah. the only Passive House, the first one in the United States of America, Man, built in Kane, Pennsylvania. That is amazing. To have the you Passive been, House have standards. Have you been in it? Yeah. I have not. This is going to be my first trip in tomorrow morning. So here we go. Is a uh, handoff, and yeah, that's going to be – Taken down inside about the 20 is Levi Wilson on the tackle. Brock George on the carry there, I think. Brock 24. George, 24, yep. So Levi Wilson makes the tackle. After a pickup of about four for George. And that's second and six in the ball spotted at the Kane Wolves. 22 yard line with just now at 5'10 to go here into the game. And now they're going to take all the clock down to the play clock down under 10, game clock under five minutes. Quarterback keeper down at the 20, down Braylon at the 15. Wagner. So I wonder if that's Wagner's brother, number eight. It might be, yeah. He's number nine, right? Yep. yep. And Troy Brady Baugh the tackler for the Wolves, but not until a first down by Wagner, right? And is, that's his, probably is his brother. Yeah, would make sense. Where do you see his thing at on there? Down there at the bottom, Braylon oh, yeah. Wagner. Yeah, okay. Ninth grade. Ninth grader, Braylon Wagner. So now under four minutes to go here, 45 to six. First and 10 at the 15. Yeah. 
And Braylon Wagner going to keep this one. Tries to go outside. He makes a move down at the oh. 10. Down close to first down, Isaiah Braylon Smith Wagner. James Dean on the tackle. And they're going to call it a gain of about seven. He's Must a ninth grader, the Wagner kid here for Red Bank. Looks pretty good, athleticism-wise. <laughs> Second down and three. Inside the 13-yard line of the Wolves. Now under three and a half to go. Braylon Wagner, the quarterback, out of the shotgun. And that's a quick handoff to number 24, and he's down inside the... Brock George, he's close to a, another first down. Might be about a yard shy. Billy Costa William Costanzo on the tackle, but it's going to be shy about a yard. So third down for Red Bank Valley, and now under three to go, 45 to six in favor of the Bulldogs from Red Bank Valley, and they're going to go to seven and zero on the season. And I think they might play at Port Allegheny next week. That'll be a big game, huh? Yeah. In Port? Has, I think it's in Port, but let me, we'll get to the bottom of this here. Braylon Wagger on the quarterback keeper off that right side, and he's going to be, I think, James Dean on the tackle, and I think he's going to be shy. It's going to bring up a fourth down, fourth and about a, Fourth and about a half a yard. Yeah, next week they'll be at Port Allegheny, <laughs> six and one Port Allegheny. And that'll be a big time for some uh, positioning and playoffs, both single A. And Kane will be down in Knox against the Keystone Panthers who've lost a couple close ones. Just another one tonight. Yeah. They're gonna rough. be hungry after, a, if they did go for that uh, two point. And just something to look forward, Red Bank undefeated. Their last game of the year is at Central Clarion who is now seven and zero as well. <laughs> Some big time football going on. And Brown and Wagner takes this one outside down touchdown. at the five. Going to be a touchdown. Braylon Wagner. A little quarterback keep himself, and he scooted around the edge. Fifty-one to six. Nineteen nothing at the half now. Yeah. It's Fifty-one six. That well, shows you how just, momentum is. Yep, momentum. You know what I mean? That's it's right. And a couple, like I said, the injuries and just kind of. Not a big squad. You look down here on the sidelines, I mean, there's, you know, gee, about 12 kids standing down there as the, you know, so you get a few injuries and, you know, it depletes it pretty quickly. There's and the snap, and there is a good kick for Klaus. And it's 52 to 6 in favor of Red Bank Valley. And, you know, not used to Kane up here. I mean, this is tough on the kids. It's tough on the coaching staff. I mean, everything. I mean, it's just you're not used to this up here. And said the way the season started with, against Brockway, that was a tight game. And then uh, just kind of unraveled. Just, yeah, I mean, that was a tight game. And the first three to St. Mary's. They've been in and, every and, game, and like then, we said. Yeah, and then Punxsutawney. I mean, it was just like, wow. And then, you know, and then you get a game like this where it just kind of un. un Unraveled, Ravels the, and I said you lose a couple of key key uh, seniors on your team, and I hope they're going to be okay to be able to, because yeah, that matters. Up. I mean, yeah. it does. You know what I mean? Your senior put in a lot year, of work yes. senior year. You don't yep. want it cut short. And he's yeah, and that's the, what you say. In a lot of work, the coaching staff, the kids. I mean, and I give here. credit to these coaches. They're yeah. they're invested and in all the way to the end. And that's why you know you see the breakout run by West there, the last you yep. know, few possessions, and then no quit. So it looks like this is going to be taken by Dane Anderson. No, it's West at the twenty-five. He's going to be tackled right at about the thirty-yard line. And West shows them strong legs. Doesn't go down as the pile. He stays up, but it's going to be at the 30-yard line. The Wolves take over with a minute and 30 to go. And like you said, Zach, 19 to six at the half, or 19 nothing at the uh, at the halftime. And you eliminate you know? few of those mistakes. Yep. You're at 12 nothing. Even some could say seven nothing. And like you said, just this high-powered offense. Eventually, by Red it's going to break. It, it is. It's like yeah. a water dam. You know, a dam. If there's a crack, you got to. 
stop it, and they weren't able to, and it just flowed. Yeah, and, and Red Bank was down in the red zone a few times, and but the I, Wolves, Wolves, Wolves defense, stopped them. I mean, yeah. they did. You know? They slowed them down for the most mm -hmm. part. Just giving a team like Red Bank short fields, it's tough. <coughs> that did go final. Uh, Punxsie uh, fell to Carn City. Carn City 15, Punxsie 13. Wow. So West again with the ball as he's going to be tackled across the 30 out there by number 55. And again, these aren't in out. These are in alphabetical order. I don't even say. Oh, it's Carroll, Gavin Carroll on the tackle. Yep. Another for big Red Bank Valley. Yep. So uh, going to be a second and eight. Reese Bajak is in at fullback too. Junior. Now comes up under center is Zook, and he hands this again to West. And West breaks a tackle close. Boy, he came close to breaking that tackle. Brought down, boy. Number four, Brock yep. Marin. Marine. And that is going to do it. So 52 to 6 in favor of Red Bank Valley. We're going to take it back to the station. We'll wrap it up after that. Listening to Kane Wolves High School Football on 1017 XZY. Supported by great local businesses like these. Pepe's Bistro, 127 Fraley Street in Kane, with a food and drink menu including salads, subs, and wings, as well as a selection of beer. Their phone number is 814-837-8712. The Spoonwood Inn. They offer lodging and accommodations on Route 6 on the edge of Kane, just across from the Knox and Kane Bike and Walking Trail. They can be reached at 814 56 11365 Flickerwood Wine Cellars with wines made in house as well as a gift shop and cocktail lounge offering a menu of entrees. They're on Flickerwood Road in Kane. Haberberger Disposal, providing careful removal of household or business trash for customers around the region. They can be reached at 814 558 4304 or online at haberbergerdisposal.com. W.E. Swanson Agency, offering plans for auto, homeowners, and business and commercial at 23 Fraley Street, on the web at weswansonagency.com. Texas Hot Lunch and Four Sons Family Restaurant, Field Street and Kane, home of the Kane Texas Hot, and serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week, 814-837-8122. Kane Lumber and Fuel, True Value Hardware, located at 250 Hemlock Avenue, serving the Kane area for over 85 years with remodeling and building supplies, tools, and paints. Cook's Home Furniture, located at 27 Fraley Street, serving you furniture styles and designs for all the rooms in your house. Cook'sHomeFurniture.com. Zook Motors, Route 6, just west of Kane, with new and pre-owned cars and trucks and service and parts department. Their inventory listings are online at ZookMotors.net. Kane Elks Club, serving dinners on Fridays for members and their guests starting at 4 p.m. daily. Open bowling and league play available throughout the year. For information, call the Elks at 814-837-8812. Howard Hanna Professionals, representing buyers and sellers of homes, commercial properties, and acreage in the Kane area and surrounding region. Online at howardhannaprofessionals.com. Field Street Boots, offering Carhartt and Timberline clothing along with hunting and fishing supplies. You can find them on Facebook or 18 Field Street in Kane. D'Angelo Custom Built Manufacturing, proud to stand behind Kane High Athletics and Academics. On the web at custombuiltmfg.com. 1017 XCY's Halftime Show is sponsored by Lobo Fitness at 27 Fraley Street in Kane. Offering classes for all ages, personal training, and 24-7 access. They can be found on Facebook by searching Lobo Fitness, and their phone number is 814-561-1286. Also brought to you by Kane Liquid Fuels and the Sparkle Car Wash in Kane. Kane Liquid Fuels can deliver on- and off-road fuels and offer a 24-hour fueling station at their location on Oak Street. Sparkle Car Wash over on North Fraley Street can pump your gas for you and also offers hoagies and more in their convenience store. The Merrill family thanks you for your support and say that the heart of our community is what makes them strong. Time now.
now for 1017 XZY's Post Game Wrap Up, sponsored by Atlantic Eastern Electrical, providing electrical contract services for business and industry. They're located in Kane and can be reached at 837 1222. Atlantic Eastern Electrical, WXZYLP, Kane. All right, that brings us back to Paul R. Miller Stadium as the Wolves fell to the high octane offense as in the second half to uh, Red Bank. Red, yeah, but fifty-two to six. I mean, that was just at nineteen to uh, nothing at halftime. But before we get into any of that breakdown, we want to hear from friends of the Wolfpack. All right, we'd like to thank our friends of the Wolfpack: John and Lori Forker, Katie Capello, David Lenaway, Debbie Lenaway. Todd and Sandy Haight, Aaron Lundeen, Paul and Lisa Kibbe, Julie Chittister, Joe and Judy Kleiber, Barb and Jim Kimbrough, Patty Buell in memory of Richard Buell, Joanne and Steve Perry, Lisa and Tim Weil, Sharon Zampona, Richard Smith, Jackie and Lowell Watts, Sharon and Gunnar Moore, Mark Brinkley, Rick Zampona, Art and Bonnie Johnson, Tammy Swanson, Casey Jones, Kathy Roston, Keith Regal, Jeremy and Joe Beth Brinkley, Parker and Jody Brinkley, Mel and Sandy Brinkley, Kim and Bill Chiketti, Don and Sue Stitt, Ruth Heater, Bobby Rumsick, Bob and Tina Rumsick, Jack and Linda Hedlund, Craig and Debbie Wenzel, James Ligenfelter, Phil and Donna Ligenfelter, Vicki and Dave Thompson, Colton Johnson and Barbie Johnson, Cyrus, Lexi, Diesel and Eric Novosel. Dennis and Jerry Lee Galvin, Jack and Jill Walker, in memory of Travis Walker, Thomas Walker, Jacob Walker, Joan Walker, Mark Gwinney, Peter Galvin, Claire Galvin. i got to flip to yet another page, which is great. Hannah and Chandler, Penn and Baby Cyprism, David and Laura Galvin, Peter Amuso, Charlie and Paula Amuso, Rod Smith, Eli and Bria Hefferly, in memory of Nada Brinkley from Michelle, Ryan, and Caleb Stanley. Stephen Swanson, Mike and Aaron Brinkley, Tony and Jackie Cicchetti, Eva and little brother Hayes Bezak, Steve and Marcy Bezak, Resold Shop, Rita Graville, Tom and Carol Nicholas, Bruce and Joanne Leonard, in loving memory of Jack and Judy Barner and Judy Newfer, Elena and Colin Strom, the Barner family, Jodell, Michelle, Jason, and Kurt Barner, Joshua King and Nicole Olowinski, Pam Wright, Jane Bostjancic, David Korn, Brittany and Tyler Bezak, Matt Gailey, Jim and Kathy Graville, Basil and Francine and Brogno, East Kane United Methodist Church, Kane United Methodist Church, Pastor Calvin and Gail Cook, Dick and Joyce Graville, Tom Jones, Molly Smith and Roy Rockwell, Mary Rotar, Tyler and Katie Smith and family, Joe and Chalice Gentile along with the fireworks crew and thank them, the fireworks crew tonight, for the uh, awesome fireworks there for our Tornado football program. And we'd also like to give a special shout out to the Resold Shop. Uh, they made a very generous donation. And if I get my fingers to work out here, uh, let's flip the page here. The Resold Store, an outreach ministry of Kane First United Methodist Church, selling new and gently used clothing, furniture, appliances, and home goods. Proceeds benefit different charities in the Kane community. Found at 43 North Fraley Street in Kane. And again, we'd like to thank them. Thank all of our friends of the Wolf Pack. You can drop off any donation up at the Radio Shack Photo and Sound Shop in Uptown Kane. Or you can go to wxzyradio.com and click on the PayPal link. And you don't need to have PayPal. It'll let you put in a credit card there, whatever you want. Any amount of donation helps keep the lights on, keeps the station going, and, of course, keeps bringing these games to you, all the listeners, who we thank immensely for all your support. Yeah, very good out there. Really, really good. And uh, said not so good for the for the Wolves here tonight because uh, just ran out of steam that second half. And we're going to have to regroup to go down to Keystone next week, which, uh, you know. It'll be tough. It'd tough be, place to be play. a tough place to play. But, uh you know, hopefully Ricky Zampona will be able to come back. I mean, Madison. just and, and Addison Plants because those guys are the seniors Leaders. on this team. And uh, you know what? And I'll tell you something too that they just they never quit out here. I mean, it, it, they yeah. they hung in there. This was a hard hit. If you were here, I mean, there, this was a physical, physical, very physical game. And you said earlier in this broadcast about uh, yeah. Port Allegheny. Yeah. 
Uh, you knew somebody yeah. over there were talking, and they, they said yeah. that was last yeah. week was one of the harder physical yep. games that they've been in yeah. in years. I yeah. mean, it was so – it's not for the lack of effort. It's really not. These kids put in a, a lot of time. Uh, the coaching staff puts in the time with them. And like any kids, I mean, but like I said, it's just, just not yep. able to pull some stuff together this year so far. But going down to Keystone yep. next weekend or next Friday night. Yeah, it'll be a tough one for the Wolves just to kind of get another win, play spoiler there. It's Keystone's vying for positioning in that single A clustered teams. And Red Bank goes to Port Allegheny. So battle of 6-1 and 7-0. Red Bank's a very good team. Wolves defensively.